Good evening. It's uh, 7 o'clock. I'd like to call this meeting to order. First item on the agenda is the acceptance of the agenda. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. <clears throat> walk-in. Is there anyone here for a walk-in period? Seeing none, move on to uh, number three, discussion and a vote on the transfer of a common Vic license for Reva's restaurant. How are you tonight? Very well, how are you, sir? Hi. Good, thank you. Thanks for coming in, and you are the new owner, and you're looking tonight for a common Vic license. Yes, sir. Go ahead, just give us a little... Um, well, we're just looking for the transfer uh, from BNC Restaurant to JKMSQ um, to serve food. Yep. Simple as that. That sounds very simple to me. So the transaction's gone through. You met with us at our last meeting yep. or a couple meetings ago. All set to go. Everything's and, gone uh, smooth, and again, yeah, this is, this is the final. And this is final for thing. Rivas. Correct. It's going to keep the name Rivas. Absolutely. Okay. Motion? Please. Move the Board of Selectmen vote to transfer the common vehicular license for Riva Restaurant from BNC Restaurant, Inc. to JKM SQ, LLC. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Further discussion from the floor? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Good luck. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck, guys. What's Good JKM luck. stand for? It's Juliana, Joe, Kerry... Michael and Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> it's Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> uh, we have the next item is a discussion and vote on a one day wine and malt beverage license for the American Legion pig roast on two at 253 Country Way. Uh, Rob Young, Robert Young, did I see him there? I'm sorry. Yep. yep. Steve? Yep. Steve, could you close that door, please? Thanks. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Either one can just give us a brief idea. Well, as, as you all know, we are going to conduct a one-day uh, pig roast, and we need a, we're need asking for a one-day beer and wine license to, uh, to allow us to do that. The date is 29 September. It's com coming on us pretty soon now. And the uh, rain date is the 30th. That's at Stevens Farm and Tentacles. Right. That's correct. Thank you. Way. Uh, discussion from the board? Just. John. Just parking, Mr. Young, Steve. Yeah, the, the, um, you, just you be able it, to get all the cars off Country Way. He's got the front whole half of the field all graded out. Did it last weekend. Um, and if it rains, packed it, it all gets, down. Oh, all well, right. And it's going to stay packed. All right. Okay. Maybe after after the rain, we'll pack it some more. And the neighbors, they know about this. I don't know. I don't think so. There's been some, there've been the, signs up for the, well the, over a month. The so. signs out front. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, he's already. We've already publicized the pig roast part itself um, for a couple of weeks. Yeah, I, th I think it's a good idea. I just it's nice if the neighborhoods are aware of it. You know. That's, that's, yeah, I think you have to. We yeah. usually do yeah. on. A wedding or an event like that, that they always notify the abutters. I believe, I believe he conducts an annual uh, event at the same time with the. It's kind of uh, in conjunction with his farm stand where he's got the hay rides and yeah, all that stuff. And he's sales. doing it separately from us, but um, you know, it goes on for about six weeks. Okay. And that opens this weekend. Uh, Rick? Um, is this going to be in terms of the um, alcohol here? Is this going to be under a tent? This is outdoors. How are you going to restrict access from um, any Tom, Dick, and Harry walking in and grabbing well, a cold one? First of all, we have a licensed bartender uh, who has 28 years' experience at TIPS certified and all, all the state requirements training. And we also are planning to post a Legion member at the beginning of that separate table for, for the alcohol. So. We'll, we'll have two sets of eyes watching for. We'll be cordoned off in any way, so there's there's restricted access to where the alcohol itself is being actually that's, served. That's, I, I don't know exactly, but that's our intent: is to, to to have it separate and and to control to and from whether we do it with a rope or, or we don't know exactly how that. We've got okay. a couple of. Till we lay, lay everything out. 
We've got two of those 10 by 10 pop-up tents. I think we yep. could put one of them with a table and yep. set that up separately. Okay. I think in the past we've, um, when we were just sort of batting this around, I think in the past we've, um, most of these things have been indoors or in some way have some restricted access. So I just think we might want to double check to make sure of the legality of this. It just it's for your own protection as well as our protection. Other than that, I've got no problem with, with any of this, of course. I think it's a great function. It serves and benefits a great group, and you guys are just the persons to do it. But I just want to make sure we're crossing T's and dotting I's on this, particularly because it is an op open field and so on. But just my two cents. Good idea. Yep. <coughs> you can put that in the motion if you want to subject to town council approval. There's a, There's a diagram of it. There's a diagram, but it shows it's that it's separate. Yeah. Yeah, Patricia, how soon? I, the the question, gentlemen, is we may not be able to authorize the sale or you know with the, with the alcohol because it's not contained within a structure and you've got a tent. So we got to check that out through town council. The question I'd be asking on your behalf is how soon can you get that because you're two a week and a half out from it, correct? Yeah. So you kind of need to know. We Whether should or not be able to get it this sell. week. I don't okay. think it will be a problem. Well, Kim can okay? check tomorrow. We have to get a policy, our policy yeah. for that thing yeah. as well. Just right. so long as you have enough time that you're not ordering it and then having to eat the cost for it, so to speak. Yeah, and I would think that a tent of some sort would be a... Yeah, we could have a tent by tent. Tent, we could set up tent and, and a put a table rope, in there. Rope yeah. thing. I'm sure we could rope off. Yeah, three, rope off. That's three sides of the square. If we have to, Ryan, Ronnie's got a lot of this orange. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, Ryan's got plenty. He uses um, it down there anyways. Motion? motion? Please. Yeah, and I'll say something about notice to abutters as well in uh, the motion. Go ahead. Okay. So move that the Board of Selectmen vote to grant a one-day wine and malt beverages license to the American Legion post 144 for a fundraiser to benefit Flag Up Situate on Saturday, September 29th with a rain date on Sunday, September 30th from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. and contingent upon town council approval and notice to abutters. Second. Discussion? Just Discussion? John? Just, just, I'm clear. I, I think I'm right. And I, it, so people understand what Flag Up is all about. The Legion actually has donated a number of flags here in town on Front Street, also for all the other business areas. And they've paid for it for themselves. And I'm assuming this is one way you're trying to raise money to defer that cost, right? I think people should understand that because it's a good event. It's great. I, the, the flyer looks great. And people should try to support it because they're obviously helping you folks defer the cost because it's not cheap to do this. So. I have tickets available if anybody would like to. <laughs> Outstanding. I, I might add that. I'm getting uh, hungry already. And I, uh, just the damage to the flags this year, we probably spent close to $1,000 fixing all the stuff yeah. that got damaged last year. And, and I'll it's bet ongoing. It's because Mother bet Nature beats them up. Be some more tomorrow. I'll, I'll bet there's a way for people to send a check, even if they can't make it Saturday, if they wanted to send a check to to the post, yep. To, to the uh, American Box Legion five seventy seven. <laughs> okay, just put down donation for flags soon. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you can obviously get tickets at the event as well. Our plan is to have them available until they run out. We we're limiting it to three hundred. So. Right. Good. Thank you. We have a motion. We have <laughs> a second. Uh, we've had discussion. Any discussion from the floor? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Steve. Uh, agenda item number five is a uh, joint vote between the Board of Selectmen and the Planning Board uh, to appoint a new uh, alternate member to the Planning Board. The Chairman of the Planning Board uh, is here, Mr. Lumbach, and maybe you could, could you invite the board members up so we can have everyone in the same. When the vote comes, everybody would be in the same general area. You know, maybe we should move that table a little closer towards us so the front row isn't getting. Thanks. Good. Still out of reach. <laughs> I'm the elder, I'll say. <laughs> Thank you for getting putting us on your agenda. As you know, we've had the alternate position in the planning board has been open. We were very fortunate that Richard was able to move up when he moved up to being a full-time member, and in fact, that created the vacancy. Um, we've come back up, and as we discussed uh, 
in our communications between the two boards, what we worked out a process whereby we would do the interviewing and then come back up and then come back and bring our results to you with a recommendation. And then the, both boards would vote on, on the opening. We were very fortunate. We had two applications. We had Monty Newman, uh, who you'll probably recall was uh, on cable. I think he was the chair of the cable advisory board. Um, and uh, Richard Pritchard, um, Steven. or Stephen, rather, I'm sorry. Um, I gotta be careful, he's bigger than I am and he's in the back of the room. Um, and I'll watch your back. I appreciate that. Um, we're very fortunate, we had two superb candidates. They both had a very, very strong background in, in, in their areas that they are both represented, that could be very well represented on the planning board. And I think if you happen to see, I think it was on, I, I was told it was on cable, uh, the discussion that we had. It was really a pretty thorough discussion. We had each, interviewed each of them for approximately a half hour, maybe a hair longer uh, on it. And I think we also included the type questions. I think we gave you a list of the type questions we had. Um, when it came down, it, it, the, the reality was we could have picked any, either of, of those two and it made a, a very significant contribution to the board. Uh, what we did is we, we, when we discussed it, we opted for uh, Stephen, and we're, we've given you a letter of recommendation that says Stephen would be, was unanimously voted by the planning board. So. Thank you. Uh, if there are any questions, Stephen is here. If there are any questions from the board, uh, this would be a good time to ask them, I believe. Dave, you're welcome. Thank you for applying. Thank you very much. Well, I appreciate the confidence from the planning board. Well, I think it was, uh, looking at your resume, it was uh, confidence well deserved. So, uh, the board, any questions? Uh, if, one, Rick? Uh, yeah, not a question, but just for people watching and, and, and interested. Um, I can't read Mr. Pritchard's long bio here, but he's been very involved in state government and other forms of government for quite a long time. We're familiar with him in situate in addition to being a situate resident, but most recently when he was um, uh, Secretary for Environmental Affairs, um, he's held other offices. He was Director of the Big Dig Safety Review, Commissioner of Department of Conservation and Recreation, and so on. So he brings some serious uh, added oomph to our town governance. And uh, like Joe and several others just said, Steve, we thank you for um, expressing interest and in coming coming back down to our to our municipal level of government after all the service you've done at the state level. It's uh, really going to be helpful. Yeah, it's really helpful. If there are no other comments or questions from the board, Bill, why don't you make a nomination and a second that's your, uh, your board, why don't you take that? Okay, uh, move to um, Recommend Stephen Pritchard for the alternate position of the Situate Planning Board. Can we change that to a point? Point. Yeah. Point. point. Good. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion has been made and seconded. I think we'll have a roll call, Kim, if we may. Mr. Limbacher? Yes. Mr. Monger? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Vogel? Yes. Mr. Mercer? Yes. Mr. Murray? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Harris? Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Congratulations, Again, Steve. thank you. Thank you. Thanks for doing the uh, interview work, too. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> Item number six is a, uh, is a discussion on the recent Housing Authority uh, hearing that this board held. When we broke last time, we announced that we had entered into a negotiations for an agreement with the Housing Authority uh, member, Marianne Lewis. Since that time, that agreement has been finalized. <coughs> the agreement has been finalized, uh, and it did result it resulted in the board sending a letter uh, to our legislative uh, representatives <coughs> asking them to put forward a home rule petition uh, raising some of the questions that Mary Ann brought up during her hearing. They've been told they are. Uh, and, uh, and, and also Mary Ann has 
uh, sent her letter of resignation into the Board of Selectmen and to the town clerk. So she has resigned from the Housing Authority. And, and we'd like to thank her for her service uh, to the Housing Authority and to the town of Situate and its residents. So that's how it was resolved. Uh, any comments from the board at all? Rick Murray. Uh, yeah, the only thing I'd just like to add is um, uh, to your words is that we've recently heard from Pat Butler, the chairman of that committee, that she's had verbal word from the state that they are going to unfreeze those funds that were being held in abeyance pending resolution of this. So now that the situation is resolved, the state has verbally told Ms. Butler of that and we're waiting written confirmation of that that it's good news in that sense so that we can move ahead with use of those funds to to assist in the uh, senior housing developments in town thank you further discussion comments thank you all uh, agenda item number seven discussion of vote special event permit fall for situate not situate October Saturday, October 13th, 2012. How are you? Thank you for Great coming time. in. Kim, I'm going to recuse, just so people understand, I'm a board member on the Chamber of Commerce, so I'm recusing myself from the discussion. Thanks. Do you want the air on? Yeah. Sean, can you reach the... Uh, the uh, this no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already standing up, John. <laughs> Ouch. Greg, it might be better to put that over there for the camera. That's typically where we put them if you don't mind. Can you get it? Sorry. There you go. How are you? Good evening, guys. How, are you, How doing? Are, you, are you doing? Very good. I'm Nico Fonsenko. I'm chairman of the uh, Chamber of Commerce, president of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, Greg is also on the board of the Chamber. Uh, he'll do the talking for us tonight about our Fall for Situate event. So, my name, my name is Greg Morris. I'm a resident of the town of Situate, also a business owner, and I'm serving on the board of directors of the Chamber of Commerce. I'm here presenting tonight on behalf of the Chamber, a special event request for an event that we've called Fall for Situate. This is over in the North Situate Village, and this is essentially a reestablishment of the Oktoberfest that used to take place in North Situate. That event kind of fizzled out during the Greenbush construction. It hasn't been held for a number of years, <coughs> eight or nine years, from what we can recollect. This event uh, is planned, we're hoping, for Saturday, October 13th of this year. It's an afternoon event from noon time to 6 in the evening. We're having a rain date of October 14th, that's the Sunday. What we're proposing is a family-friendly event uh, consisting of uh, a music and game section where we're going to have games and rides for kids to participate on. Um, we would have a vendor and crafter portion of the event where we would have local vendors and artisans uh, come in and display their, their products. We're going to have an ice cream eating contest. We're going to have a chowder fest. You'll see this whole event is essentially taking place in the MBTA parking lot in front of the WPA building at the intersection of Henry Turner, Bailey Road, and Country Way. So we've broken that parking lot down into a couple of different sections. We're hoping to utilize the park directly across from the parking lot as a pumpkin display and to build up a staging area where across the street we'll have a pumpkin carving station and you'll be able to take your pumpkins across and put them on display. And at the end of, end of the event at six o'clock we have a pumpkin lighting and light it up uh, at dusk time. When we've gone around North North Situate, and we've talked to people about this, everyone seems to remember the Shouter Fest. They also seem to recollect having a, um, a hay ride event. And we've talked to uh, someone about coming in and doing a hay ride event. Uh, what we would do, we're in talks right now with Wilder Brothers about using this portion of their property as 
the loading zone for that. But we don't have a tractor pulling a hayride trailer. On the trail would be a acoustic guitar, uh, and that would go around the Mordecai Lincoln Circle down to Cannon Road here and serve as a nice loop for that type of a thing. The, uh, you know, the goal here is to promote business in the North Situate District. Uh, We've met preliminarily with the Board of Health, we've met with DPW, we've met with police. We understand that there's going to be a need for uh, details from DPW to assist with some of the trash uh, collection as well as to uh, deal with traffic, setting up some horses and some signage along Henry Turner Bailey Road. Uh, the Board of Health has agreed that we need to file for a food permit due to the Chowder Fest. We're going to be bringing in uh, 10 or 12 local restaurants to compete in the competition. In police, I've spoken with the chief uh, about getting details. Uh, we've talked about setting up details at the two pedestrian crosswalks that we think would be most utilized for people crossing over to North Situate Village and for people crossing across to the pumpkin display. The majority of the parking, the primary parking for this event, would be in the MBTA parking lot where it's a Saturday. The T isn't running. Uh, there's excess parking there. We have a call into the T to uh, negotiate the, the rights to use parking that day. From the parking, there's a uh, paved walkway right on down to the crosswalk, both in front and behind the buildings here on the <coughs> way. We're hoping that with this event that we could turn a crowd of approximately 1,000 people. That's our goal for the entire event. We're going to staff it uh, with approximately 30 volunteers and uh, Chamber of Commerce members. This is geared as a family-friendly event. I think it's an attraction not only to people outside of Situate, but also to the families in Situate. We see it as a benefit to the community. And the Chamber of Commerce, I think, has an excellent reputation of providing events like this uh, other times of the year, you know, doing the Halloween down the harbor, and we're hopeful that we can reestablish this Oktoberfest that was lost eight years ago with this new fall for Situate event. I guess I turn it over for any questions, comments. Like. To, to the board, anyone like a comment? Uh, what, just Tony? a quick, I, I went to the event years ago when it was um, run back then, and I think it was a great event. I think they had great turnouts. I know the Chowder Fest was a big draw. Um, and I think it's great for a fall activity. Um, my only question is, did you speak to the um, business owners in North Situate? Are they on board with what you're doing? At, at this point, we've only spoken with a couple of them. We haven't gone around to all of the uh, businesses. We wanted to come before you and get permission for the event, really, before we, we publicize. Yeah. I guess I would suggest in the future, it probably makes sense to get them on board before you come to us, because if we say yes, and you don't have their support, then it's kind of a, yeah. Don't I can speak a little bit to that. We haven't spoken specifically about October 13th, but for a number of years now that I've been on the chamber, uh, the North Situate businesses have really sort of, uh, to put it bluntly, asked for more activity in North Situate because there's been lots of times that they feel, and I don't want to speak for them, that the harbor gets a lot of attention. There's, there's North Situate, there's Greenbush, there's Hummer Rock that have a few scattered events, but the Chamber has often failed, I think, to really focus on them as different and distinct business districts that need attention to make sure that commerce is thriving there as well. And I think that... Well, I'm not insinuating that they don't want it. I, I, yeah. would, I don't know so, why they would not want it. I mean, it's going to draw people right. down there, but In I think just the uh, preliminary stages to have them involved and have a discussion would be beneficial. Yeah. There'll be no roads closed then, will there? No. No. Flow to no. That's what the police details are for, to make sure traffic does flow. Yeah. And the other thing I just want to point out, that I, I don't think you said, but maybe you did and I missed it, but there's not going to be any alcohol at the event. So people are wondering if there's going to be alcohol and hay rides and people with knives cutting up <laughs> pumpkins. Nope, it's uh, ice cream, chowder, and that's it. And all the other stuff. It sounds like a lot of fun. I hope to put it on my calendar and uh, bring the whole brood up there. One of the, one of the reasons we're stopping it at six is sort of specifically to try and build it as a family event and not as a German beer fest. <laughs> well, you have a lot more room now because I think the last time they did the tennis courts are there. So, yeah. you know, you've got the trains don't run on the weekends either. So it's not like you're going to have to deal with that either.
right? Motion? Well, yeah, one second. More discussion? One second. I think it's a great idea. It's a family event, and I might feel that I'll go as far as saying sometimes the chamber events in the harbor in the summer don't help businesses. They might hurt them. And this is just the opposite. I don't see why. We have Ann sitting in the back room, and I think if she had a problem with it, I think we'd hear from her. So. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Hope too soon, Sean. <laughs> yes, Ann. Thank you. Uh, discussion from the board? Further discussion from the board? Motion. Motion. Move the board to select and vote to grant a special event permit to the Situate Chamber of Commerce for an event fall for Situate for Saturday, October 13th, 2012 from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., including setup and takedown time in the WPA building parking lot in the park at the North Situate clock. This permit must meet all conditions set by the town administrator and town departments and is subject to receipt of a certificate of insurance in accordance with page two of the special event permit application. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Good luck as, you, as always. Thanks, See you. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks. Nico, are you going to stay up for the next item? Are you speaking on the, on the uh, cable TV? I'm not. I mean, on the uh, July what? cable television filming program about Florence. Situate. Can you ask uh, John to come back in? Sure. It's not me. Not you. Patricia. You, this what? Is the viewpoint? This next item. Sir. Viewpoint? Yes. Yeah, who's oh, speaking? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so. Do you want me to speak to that? I'll, I'll stay we up can, here. We can all. <laughs> Do you want me to start and then we can uh, Well, no, either one. I just wanted to make sure somebody was going to speak to it. So I'll start and then you can jump That'd in. That would be great, yes. So um, several months ago, the town was contacted by a uh, film production company, a national film production company that's a fairly new program that does um, filming uh, after some research on hidden jewels and great places to live in the United States. And after a series of a few preliminary interviews, um, our town was selected and offered to participate in the filming of this production, um, to which we agreed. And we got some funds secured from our cable access grant to help with the production costs, which Comcast approved. And today um, and tomorrow morning, there's been um, a film producer here, director of production, filming all over Situate and interviewing various folks about all the wonderful qualities we who live here know and love about the, the um, town. So uh, Tony and Joe were interviewed, and Nico, as president of the chamber, was interviewed. So um, uh, please share um, your thoughts. And you saw the sure. script. The town wrote the script, chose the shots. Um, soup to nuts <coughs> has been involved in that. And, and you can probably talk about you know the economic development things we're moving toward. Absolutely. I'm sorry, Joe. I thought we were further on the agenda, so I wasn't sure it was that same item. Um, this is a great thing from my perspective as president of the chamber. Um, the Economic Development Commission, which for those of people that don't know, is a fairly new organization at, at the town level that's really been um, pushing hard to try and make sure the town is focusing our dollars and our efforts in a strategic way to make sure Situate is a larger point on the map for the, the region and the country, to really push tourism, to push commerce for our businesses, which goes hand in hand with the things that the chamber is trying to do for our residents and for our small businesses and medium businesses here in town. 
um, when uh, when Trisha and the town came to me as part of the chamber to discuss this um, it actually was really exciting for me uh, it was it was very fun on a personal level just to be able to be interviewed it's not often I get to stand outside of my office in front of a camera um, it was definitely an interesting experience today but uh, but it was also something I was really proud to be able to do because being able to talk about a town that I absolutely adore living in is something that uh, I never seem to have a problem doing until you put me in front of a camera I guess on take 20 I think I finally got it um, it's it's really something I think is invaluable to the town of Situate because it's not only putting us on a national map uh, in terms of the broadcasting ability of what we're going to do with it um, but when we talk about Situate as a vacation destination in the summertime in the spring in the fall when we talk about the growth that we're trying to go through with the uh, multiple ways of, of traveling here not only uh, are we a sort of jewel by the sea but we're also very accessible uh, as I talked about today on, on camera to the ocean to the city to the south shore to the Cape and um, and those are things I don't think everybody knows well enough especially outside the, the south shore area um, so I think it's it's just vastly going to help us attract um, new residents, uh, new businesses to the town, which we're always interested in doing as the chamber, um, but also to grow, obviously, the, the current base of businesses we have, which is something that the chamber and the EDC feel extremely strongly about. So I thought it was phenomenal. Um, the producer that I worked with today did a great job of, of uh, really directing so that everything looked very professional, very well done from what I could see, and uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing the, the final product. So. Great comments, Tony. I, mean, I, I can just add a little bit. You know, I, I, I was flattered. I think I was the chair when they first contacted us and um, that they happen, actually happened to pick us out of all the communities in Massachusetts. I think they were, I think they were doing two or three communities in each state, I think was their goal. Um, it is a national broadcast as well, well as a local broadcast. So it will be, um, I think, the Discover Channel as well as uh, we'll have some other markets that we can target where we want it to go so that we can try and bring people that will have a, a like um, attraction to us. So for instance, people that may be boating from Maine down to our harbor and take advantage of that would be some of the markets that we chose. Um, I think it's great and I think it's a good use of our money and I think that's exactly what the Economic Development Committee is working on and they were wholeheartedly in support of it as well as, as, well as a lot of the other boards in town. So I think it's a good opportunity that we took advantage of it. It does not affect the taxpayer at all. The money was used from the cable fund which we get from Comcast and they approved the purchases, I mean excuse the, uh, the expenditure as well. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it and I want to see how it turns out. So do I. Great. Comments from the board? <clears throat> Any further comments? Sorry. Good. It was great. It was a great idea, and uh, and the rain you. and the rain held off for filming, which was the nice. rain held off. I was gonna say, was there any sun? Hopefully, there was. Nice. There was some. There was some sun. Okay, always sun. And Trisha sun. did a ton of the work on it, so kudos go to you for helping them with the script. I mean, we really had to. We really directed the whole process, so we had to find the features that we wanted to be photographed, the people to speak, the scripts for them to use. Um, they gave us the expertise, but we were completely in charge of the content. So. Um, you know, good work on all of that. So thank you. Thanks, you need guys. a motion on that? Too? I don't know if we nope. do. We're all set. We're yeah. all set. Okay. Thank you, Nico. Thanks, Nico. Uh, number nine, discussion vote, Pier 44, building use, Erico Road. <clears throat> uh, as I'm sure everyone here knows, we've had uh, owned Pier 44 for a few years now, and, and uh, it's seen various uses over the past couple of years. It's a great, a, a great spot, a great uh, building. And tonight we're going to decide, hopefully decide, uh, what we're going to use it more or less permanently for. Uh, when I say permanently, there are other plans in the work. There's a master plan <coughs> in the works that uh, hopefully will happen a few years down the road, which could change the dynamics of this whole discussion in some ways because uh, uh, gate school would be used for uh, many different departments, uses, uh, both school and town. So, But t tonight's discussion will be on the use of Pier 44 going forward. We want to reach a decision on this. We've uh, batted it around, I think, long enough. We've certainly heard uh, from many of our constituents 
in the room here with presentations as well as Village Market down the harbor and the North Situate as we as we travel throughout our town ourselves. So we've got a pretty good idea what people are looking for. We had a study put forward uh, by the Pier 4 Building Committee. Uh, they came out with their results. They did a survey, a very extensive survey and a very extensive work on this. Uh, we've all read that study. I think we have it here tonight. So that's the purpose of this agenda item. What I'm going to do is uh, open it up more or less, first of all, to the floor any further discussion or new discussion, if I could put put it that way, from the floor on regarding the use of Pier 44, we'll, we'll do that now. Uh, I know it's been hashed and rehashed uh, pretty thoroughly, but there's always something new, I'm sure. So anyone that would like to speak from the floor, giving their, yes? Hi, I'm Margie Sullivan. Margie, how are you? How are you all? I have been on the planning committee and the advisory committee and the school committee and over the years in that position I had an opportunity to vote for studies and um, supported the idea and, and supported the past a master plan <coughs> that has come up before this idea and it's a very good one and a necessary one but I know these studies come to a conclusion which often is either rejected or accepted or shelved and then those that are accepted have to go to town meeting. They might have to go to town meeting votes. They might have to be funded. The funding sometimes comes, some funding doesn't. It's all a hugely time consuming thing. The, um, I've seen things just not happen because of that, either a school renovation or a fire station or a senior citizen new center. In fact, the first center was voted, the funding was done, and unfortunately, by the time it came to building it, there wasn't enough funding. Um, but that was done, I think, before I even thought about becoming a senior. Here we are. <laughs> so I just, um, I think that we are know that right now, Pier 44, its use will be somewhat interim. I know that's a, not quite official word, but uh, possibly, and probably, when the master study is completed, and funded and ready to go, there'll be some changes and perhaps there'll be a new community building for all citizens or there might be a new senior center. Whatever the plan is, I don't think the seniors deserve to be told they have to wait some more. That building they're in now is pretty decrepit. It's second floor has been condemned. It's been going on way too long. I can't think of a better use than letting our seniors go to this beautiful, beautiful building now have it still available as it would be evenings and weekends, and get used for it every day, and then go forward with whatever that building on Brook Street can be done, have that disposed of or whatever. It won't be an issue. And just know that we are doing something now positively while we are going through the very long process that we know is going to be coming to decide what our final solution will be. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, further discussion from the floor? Oh, uh, yes. Ellen, go ahead. Well, I'm Ellen Bernardi, and I am a resident, and uh, as you know, I'm a proponent of moving the senior center. I'd like to clarify, uh, I sent to each of you um, a, an email regarding the use, projected use for the center. I want to make sure you all receive that. Um, yes. Is that a yes? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, did that put in, Mr. Danny, you specifically, and I answered uh, your particular questions when I went back and viewed the tape of the programs that you were interested in finding out what the seniors, what the Council on Aging would have in mind to do. I don't know, I have a copy of it. I don't know if you want the rest of the. Um, people that are assembled to have those answers, it's, um, things that we have talked about. Do you have any questions on it before I um, continue? I think I said I'd be happy to answer any questions. I didn't hear back from anybody. Well, I think if, if the, the email you're referring to is the, the email that you sent us, and thank you for doing so, uh, outlining the, a lot of possible uh, 
courses, classes, events that could be held at Pier 44. Is that the one? Right. Yeah. That we can't do at Brook Street. Um, Selectman Danahy had asked at the time, uh, mentioned Meals on Wheels, and he said, you know, there's not a kitchen at Pier 44. Uh, what would be involved? Who would you be servicing? Uh, those were the questions that I addressed. He asked about bereavement groups mm -hmm. that we would like to have, um, caregiver groups that I explained to you, uh, weight-bearing exercise programs that we can't do at Brook Street, a lifelong learning program, which is educational, um, and a day program for people to come in and have capable people taking care of their um, loved ones, uh, an intergenerational program using the facilities and interacting the rec, the people from the rec department, the students, adopt a grandparent, all of these <coughs> programs. I, well, one question, well, if I may, I break in. These these uh, events or these programs that you've outlined bef uh, in your email, mm -hmm. the senior center have any any of those been done at the uh, Pier 44? Oh. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, we've been doing, we've done, um, we started doing the educational. We are now teaching conversational Italian, and people are very, very excited about that. We're looking for other courses, Mr. Mm -hmm. North. But that's been done at Pier 44 now. Yes. Okay, um, so it is. We're also, tomorrow is the caregiver's group. We are the only place, we have many, many people who have seniors who are taking care of people with Alzheimer's and dementia 24-7. They don't get out of the house. I, I understand. My, but, my take, but because we're in Pier 44, we, can, we are now having these people who couldn't leave their loved one. They're coming to Pier 44. We're using one room for the for the support group so we can do, uh, we have people coming and speaking, We they can talk to one another, they can support the issues that they're having, and the other room has volunteers that are working with the people who they care for. That is, if they did this at the VNA, it would cost them $23 an hour. So, so the answer is yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Thank you. Answer, Thank the you. The answer is yeah. the question was: Are they being done at Brook Street? No. No. I asked yeah. if those would be some of them were being done at Pier Forty Four. And I, my answer is yes, they are. Yes. They, okay. Because we have been invited to uh, use it. To use it. Okay. Thank you. And if I could say that the difficult part of that is that the staff is now split, and if. If there is a question, if there is a need, <coughs> half and the offices and half of the staff, at least half, if not two thirds, are on Brook Street, mm -hmm. and the person asking the question is at Pier 44. I understand. It has been requested that a landline be put in at Pier 44 for safety reasons, and that has not come forward. Um, we've it's been not advised correct. to use cell phones. Not correct. And it's not correct. I know I don't have a cell phone. If, if that's not correct, then I apologize. This was information I know that we still don't have a cell phone now. But along, I mean, a, a hand, hand landline. landline, thank you. Um, but these are the types of programs that can't be done at Brook Street because you can't have a daycare program and have the knitting group in. You can't be teaching a class and have a bereavement all in the same room. So this is why we're showing now how the room and the facility can be used. And I think that that was the question that um, Selectman Danahy had. So that's what I was wondering if you had any questions. Um, I certainly want to hear from other people that are here and I would just reserve the right to have a couple of um, minute or two at the end of the discussion before you make a decision. Else? Discussion for the floor? Anything? I'm Katie Johnson. I live at Allen Place. I have a petition here with probably 
65 signatures of situate residents that people that aren't here tonight all wanting to see the senior center moved over to Pier Why don't you, a bunch of bring it up and either give it to us or give it to Kim? I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. I think there are some other people here that also have some. I'm Ellen Lambros from Amy Sky, and I have 54 signatures. Why don't you put them all together? And I'm Julian Ball from Rebecca Road, and I have some too. Hi, Ruth Kelly, Citra. Uh, some of the people are not seniors that signed it. So right. That's yeah, that's fine. Right. That's fine. That's fine. That's the I'm Ruth Dodds from Best Parish Road, and I have some signatures. If we could put them all together and. I'm Joan McSweeney, and I also have a petition. They also would just like to comment that most of the people who signed this, and half of them were under 60. Right. Mm -hmm. Thought that this had already happened. Yeah. And there are other other comments that they were really. Um, they thought that. It was really a shame that, that the seniors had no place to go and that this had not happened to them yet, and they were really kind of disgusted. Um, Thank, Thank you for you. sharing that last part in particular. <laughs> Why don't you bring those up? Why don't you try to bring them up, put them all together, and we'll take them now. We'll collect those now, so we'll, so we'll have them. There was a hand in the back, I think, was there? Yep. Pass. Thank you, and thank you for the for the work that uh, <coughs> you put in to gathering those petitions also. Uh, Ellen, why don't you wrap it up with the, from the floor? I would just like to, since this seems to be the uh, determining evening here, um, I think that it's safe to say that according to the town report that I uh, just purchased, um, we have over 4,700 residents that are over the age of 60 or over in situate. And people like the people you just saw handing in these signatures went around the town, um, went to grocery stores and to convenience stores and to the transport station and talk to their friends and uh, family just to get a feeling if other people are interested in this and whether or not they had any issues about it. What I, I guess I don't understand is what would be the harm or the negative aspect of moving the Council on Aging as an interim step to the completion of the town's master plan. Supplying a functional kitchen and a dining area, which wouldn't cost the town, would allow even more programs and interaction. And I think it's important to realize that rather than this being a negative for the town, this could be a laboratory of study. This could be a design for the planners of the master plan to see for the next eight years, uh, however long it takes, what one third of the voting population of this town can do and, and what having this facility would allow us to bring to the seniors and to the rest of the generations in this town. It's important to have this interaction. And I think that, as I said, with the, with the seniors that have gone out and, and walk the streets and whatnot to get this, I think that this is really telling you that, as I said in July, the seniors in this town have found their voice. And I believe that they're going to be heard, whether it's with Pier 44 and that move as a um, interim period, or to find another location, but probably not to wait eight years. Thank you. No, I'm not done. Well, you, you're, very, you're very close. I, I know that, and yeah. I appreciate it. But when I was here in July, I did get cut off at the end. And I think this uh, is uh, Ellen, really, this when you were sued me for one second, one second, let, let me just, I'll let you finish, baby. Okay. But don't say that. When you were here in July, you spoke for the better part of an hour. Now, we, and I welcome that. I have no complaint about that. But please don't say you were cut off. That's not being fair to anybody. Uh, Go ahead. I apologize if it was Go ahead. cut off. We had a discussion for close to an hour, yep. a lot of interaction. And I, from the, the comments that I heard afterwards, um, they were very supportive 
in that we got a lot of information out. So I, I just want to pose a scenario um, to you. And that's, would you lock the doors of a, of a shelter to, say, a group of homeless people that needed a place to go or a place to get food or a place for shelter because you had in mind, we have a better plan. And if you'll just be a little more patient, we are going to show you how wonderful that is because we hear your frustrations and we hear what you need. I wonder how each of us would feel if we were out there in that line, waiting to get into a facility that's right in front of us. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'll uh, bring it back to the board for discussion and ultimately a vote. Um, Anyone like to, Sean? Trisha, what would be the cost to renovate that kitchen? I mean, she said there's a kitchen and it's all set to go. What would the, the at no cost we could move there? Well, You've been in the kitchen more recently than I have been, but. The current kitchen, that space is there, couldn't be used. Um, I mean, I think what folks need to understand is there's no appropriation to run that building. There's no staff. There's no money to fund the utilities. The building needs some additional work. We can pay for repair work out of the mitigation fund. But the, the large industrial kitchen has been completely gutted. There's a <coughs> wet sink there. Um, but the building, um, in order to be used 24-7, would need some work. And as I mentioned already, there's no operational budget that's been approved for it. No, I just want to make it clear that you know there, there is a cost. that restaurant in its day sat 400 people it's capable of doing it again but at a great cost I watched my father do it once many years ago remodel a restaurant right. at a great cost to all the equipment that has to be done that's the first thing that jumps out others can jump you know I'll uh, come back to we, me later. will be discussion further discussion from anybody we're talking now yep okay. I, I mean, I guess I'll state what we stated at the last time. I mean, the building cannot be used as a senior center. The, res the, the purchase agreement restricts it from being a senior center. So the name on that building will not be a senior center. We've spoken with, we've spoken with the MBTA again after uh, Ellen said that she had spoken to them and, and they said that they could do it, which they, uh, vehemently a deny saying that to them, uh, to her, and that is not what the building can be used for. Um, that's what we've been told, and that's what the, the agreement says. Um, the fact that the building can be used and should be used um, for senior activities, and it seems like it is to some extent, is what we've said all along. All of us agree that Brook Street is not adequate and that it needs to be um, improved, moved, changed, whatever. Um, that it's not adequate and that that's how we're hoping that the seniors will supplement it by using the facility of Pier 44 as it's been available to them for the last two years um, and I'm glad to see that it's starting to be used one of the programs that I've seen uh, suggestions says let us have it during the day and someone else can have it at night well essentially it's available to you during the day it's available to you whatever time you can get the keys and go down and use it and run a program so um, so I hope that you utilize that. The building, as far as I understand it, will not be called a senior center. It, it cannot be based on the agreement of the purchase. Um, the building should also be used to everybody in the community. So if uh, Little League wants to hold some event there, if someone else wants to hold an event there, that, that it's accessible to them as well. Um, as you've all mentioned, there's not a lot of people that probably want to use it during the day. The seniors have a lot of activities that could go on during the day and we hope you use the building there. Um, it's supposed to be used for the entire community and it's supposed to be used for recreation and open space use it, uses and that's what um, that's what the restrictions are on it and that's what we have to follow. So um, I, I don't want you to take the fact that I don't believe that it can be or will be called a senior center the fact that we don't understand that the current senior center is not adequate. We all understand that and we're working towards getting that improved 
um, as, as quickly as we possibly can. So that's my two cents at this point in time. Rick Murray. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, to follow up on some of the things that Tony said, and I also want to ask a couple questions if I can here at some point. Um, everybody up here, you know, wants a good, good, actually a great place for the seniors. And I don't really like it when things are presented to us as rather than be a negative. So Ms. Bernardi, has anybody here suggested that use of this would be a negative? We've all, finding a place for you all to be, would be a negative. We're all on the same side as you are, and we're all trying to find a place. Hey, this is my time to talk. You've had your chance, and then you'll get your chance to respond. But please don't interrupt, because that's what leads people to be disgusted with the town, when people just interrupt all the time. So let's just have a conversation here and be able to move forward, please. Okay? So everybody here <coughs> acknowledges, as Mr. Vignani just said, that the current senior center as a location stinks. And there's 55 different reasons why, probably 110 different reasons why. It doesn't necessarily help when we talk about homeless people or pets or every other things because those are just noise in the discussion. In my opinion, there's two separate issues here. First issue, which is what we're here for mostly tonight, is what are we going to do with that building that's currently located down on Pier 44, temporarily, pending the master plan. The second issue, which we're not going to be discussing tonight because we haven't done the master plan is, is what's going to be a permanent home for a senior center or a community center, plus a host of other things going on as part of the grand plan. And I think it was you who said, you know, plans come and plans go and it might not come to fruition. If everybody is jumping up and down, happy, happy, joy, joy about the thing, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. There's money and so on and so forth. Couldn't agree with you more. All right. So I couldn't agree with you guys more also that we got to do something between now and then. We're not just going to say stay in Brook Street forever. And in fact, we never have said that. We never have said you're going to be staying in Brook Street forever regardless of the master plan. As Mr. Vignani just said, we also have completely opened up use of the current Pier 44 structure for everybody to use, including yourselves. And that's what I think we should continue to do pending the master plan. We should have, as Tony just said, as Mr. Vignani just said, we should allow you folks to have access to it for scheduling. There's also other spots you can have access to, the Maritime Center, GAR Hall. Some of these facilities might be better for different events or different functions as well. But certainly, Pier 44 should be in the equation. We have certain financial limitations, as, um, as Sean and Tricia just pointed out about the kitchen and the cost thereof. We're not going to be breaking a budget. We don't have certain amounts of money available. So we're not going to be doing that sort of stuff. So, I've got a couple other questions here that I just want to have some sort of clarity on. Um, you know, or, yeah, so let me ask a question of you, um, Ms. Bernardi, if I could. You've been the lead on this, and you're certainly representing, you know, at least the people in this room, plus a bunch of others who I understand can't be here for whatever reason or not. Um, I watch as much of Channel 10, or now Channel 9, as I can, um, but I may have missed some things. Have you presented these ideas? to the uh, Council on Aging as part of a agenda item at one of their meetings and have gotten their formal endorsement of these programs specifically? Is there anyone from the council here? No, I'm, I'm asking Ms. Yes. So you have Ms. Bernardi? Hi, Audrey. I've been hearing for 10 years. I know it's inadequate and we love the seniors and we want to do something for you, but 10 years have gone by with the ups and downs, one third of the population of seniors are going to increase at that level. When I hear we can use the community center, it is with stipulation. Audrey, and excuse me, let me break in, Audrey, for yeah. one second, please, and in order to keep this somewhat uh, uh, on track. I think Mr. Murray asked the question of Ms. Benati that has to be answered by her, I think, not, a, not necessarily a dialogue on things that we just heard. Well, let me let Ms. Ben answer the question first, please. Let, let me we'll just rephrase yeah, the question, too. Talk to the council, um, About these specific programs, the ones that you listed in your email to us and so on? Absolutely. Yes. Okay, fine. Thank you. And, and then... Okay. 
Uh, yeah, no, I, okay, I, I Audrey, that. Audrey, please, I'm gonna, I'm gonna insist. We're gonna do this the right way, okay? It was just we, specifically we, about those things that she listed in her email, and I understand. There, there may be a points. brief opportunity. We, we yeah. spoke from the floor earlier before you came, and there may be a brief opportunity after we finish to speak. But right now, it's up here on the board, and I'm gonna hold it to that. And then the the other question I had uh, is of Ms. Choate. Um, you know, we made very clear many months ago that uh, the Pier 44 structure was available for scheduling. Um, We've been using it for almost two years, Mr. Murray. We've done very large presentations down there. We were the ones who've got the drug uh, presentation going. We've done health and education and have right. 40 or 50 people there. We had an informational with GATRA. We use yoga. We have chair yoga. We are using it constantly. And we have been for a good year and a half. The first six months, I thought all I could do was the big presentations. And then as soon as Trisha told me, no, that's not true, you can use the, the programs, we've been doing programs. And they're growing. We have yoga star with one program right. with 30 people gone to two days. Yoga chair, same thing. They're all enlarging. Conversational Italian. Okay, that's I, that's good. You've answered my question. The reason the reason why I ask is because I've personally received phone calls and been accosted by individuals at uh, Village Market and so on who have said to me that they have been barred from <coughs> access to the um, Pier 44 building for senior events. That's and so true. I'm just I'm trying to seek out where these lines of communication come, whereby a significant segment of the senior population seems to mistakenly feel that they've been barred from Pier 44, which they have not been. It's been available for things for, for many months. So I just want to make sure I understand this. We have an open door policy. I have never had a phone call to that effect, never. As a matter of fact, we just did a survey. It was a random survey. We sent 500 uh, questions out to 500 seniors. And we got about 45%, which is excellent, return. Overwhelmingly, 95% for staff, for, for the programs, for the, the ability to help uh, help with the social services, we, they were overwhelming. Well, you know, far, so Fine, so you, and, I, and I understand that, and they should be overwhelming. You guys do a great job down there. I, I keep, again, yeah, want to keep this on yeah, track. I think I we're, that. we're having a tendency to just... Well, I, and, and, and everyone agree. Everyone agrees. No, the Florence, hold on. Good. Hold it. Let's do it the right way. I don't want to repeat it again, all right? I do not want people just open dialogue here. Mr. Murray asked a question. We put it on the floor earlier. People had a chance to talk. Let him have a chance to talk and let the rest of the board have a and, and chance to talk. And I'll wrap up now. Right? I'll wrap up my comments at this point. So just to summarize, I have no problem with uh, programs uh, endorsed by the Council on Aging and operated through the senior center temporarily using that structure. I never have had that problem. In fact, that's the way I thought it's been certainly since last July, even before that, as Florence herself just said. So I don't see a real change in the status quo. I do not support calling it an interim senior center. Someone earlier on said moving the senior center temporarily to Pier 44. <laughs> I don't endorse that either because that's going to be moving offices and all that sort of stuff. I think which we can't do and shouldn't do, and then there's all the cost of the kitchen and all that. Um, I completely support you folks having access to it, working out some way. I mean, we're the policy setting board. Implementation is, happens at town hall, which would be Tricia and Florence and so on. Working out some way where you can get access to it. I have no problem with that. But other people want access to it as well. I do not support exclusive access by you folks, if that's what you're asking, but I don't think it is. Right, so I don't see what the big situation here is, and then when the grand plan comes about, we'll figure it out then. But I do not support at all moving it to the, to the Pier 44 as a temporary senior center. I'm sorry, I'm not going to support that. John, That's it, Mr. Chair. No, thank um, you. First of all, Ms. Bernardi, I did receive it, and I thank you for sending it. The, the reason why I wanted to take a look at it was I wanted to know more spatially uh, the various um, potential programs that could be used down at the present day Pier 44, Situate Harbor Community Center. Um, obviously, there are a number here that you had listed, um, and um, it's very helpful for me to be able to digest that to try to ascertain what could constructively work down there. 
The reason why I say that is this. Um, this is a discussion about Pier 44 building use. And, you know, I, I also raise and draw everybody's attentions to the Pier 44 options and feasibility study that was undertaken for over a year. A number of people participated. They had seminars. And what came out of that was, you know, th primarily three uses that most people in town were trying to identify for that location. And um, the first item or first area that they looked at was a parkland. Another item was a maritime use in some way, shape, or form. And then the multi-generational community center, some way of trying to use it multi-generational, multi-uses. And I just, I hope this conversation doesn't get bogged down into, monopolized into one special use um, with multiple programs. Because in my view of that facility is that it's supposed to have multiple uses. So what are multiple uses? Um, I had gone through and I, I made a whole list of different things that I thought potentially could be used there. And I think something that everybody in town could go there and have some benefit that came out of it. Um, you mentioned the kitchen. That's why I asked about Meals on Wheels, because the kitchen had been ripped out because all of the uh, equipment was, it was in terrible shape. Some was sold um, when the kitchen was there. It was filthy. It was disgusting. You wouldn't want to cook anything on it, even if you had to steam clean it. It was just gross. So we're going to have to buy equipment if we're going to have a kitchen down there. Given the size of the kitchen down there, as Sean mentioned, it's a huge cost if we're going to have a kitchen of that size. But it's important for us to understand if this town is going to have Meals on Wheels through the town and not through another denomination, what is it going to take? And that's a cost that we need to take a look at because I think maybe that's a function or a use that can be used down at the um, uh, Pier 44. Um, the other thing I, I looked at is, see, Pier... The, the building doesn't have an elevator. I think it has a lift, but it doesn't have an elevator. And so you got to think about if you're going to have access to the second floor, an elevator is going to be very important because you can build on the second floor. So that building could actually be built out, potentially. I see you're shaking heads, but I'm just telling you it can. So you, you can take a look. That's a cost. So is that a priority or is it should be lower on the list? And so we need to have some kind of committee that will go through and take a look at that. I say committee. I mean, I, I'm happy to tell you what I think it should be used, and I will in a minute. But I'm saying there are certain things we're going to have to take a look at. If you're going to have green space and you're going to have a park down there, there's going to be a cost for that. Um, also, it means that you're going to have less parking. If you're going to have, you know, some kind of, like, observation area, do you put in piers the way that the committee had suggested? Not recommended, but suggested, which means that you're going to have to put pylons. You're going to have to get DEP permits and... Um, um, to try to see for people to be able to go down and have <coughs> observation dock. So I looked at it and I said, you know, I came up with some thoughts based on what they were suggesting between open space, other uses that could be used, and as well as a park. And I think the board should consider it being a community center, not just exclusively or specifically or primarily for a senior center. I don't think it will function there. But what I think what would be very helpful is that we have something in consideration for for some form of boating, whether it's kayaking, whether it's some, some kind of like canoeing, so you could maybe rent things there. I think it's also important to maybe consider it as a center for uh, the historical aspect, considering you have um, uh, Abigail and um, Rebecca Bates' house, you've got the lighthouse, you've got a walkway that many people use going from Jericho all the way to the lighthouse back and forth. It could be a staging area for people to stop, sit, take a look, go down further. You could put some kind of recreational little uh, <coughs> exercise you know, centers or, or stations along the way to try to encourage people to go down there and use it. It's going to benefit people here in this room. It's going to benefit other people who go by there on a daily basis. You know, you can take a look at it and you can say maybe we could um, use it for um, cycling. People like to bicycle a lot. Maybe we should consider extending bike paths <coughs> or trying to make it so that you can go to the lighthouse and try to have people come down there and use it. I actually think that it was very successful when people in town were renting it for their own either private parties or functions. I think that's very important. I've heard a lot of people complaining that we took that, that opportunity away. And I think we should have that open for people to rent, to be able to use. But there are cost issues that we have to evaluate because the problem was that we were renting it for too little and it was costing us too much to clean up and to fix. I think we should use it for hearings not just for the Board of Selectmen, for Council on Aging, for School Committee, for Planning Board, for Zoning Board. When we have a big item that you know, fills up this room, I mean, Pier 44 is a perfect location to be able to have a, a large discussion. I think you should have, um, when you mentioned, you know, the uh, bereavement groups, 
If it can't be fit into the present day, which it can't, and we don't have it, then it should be down there because that's a larger space that we can utilize. And I think that's a program <coughs> that Council on Aging should be able to have, just like recreation should be able to say, we're going to use it. And I think what's important whenever, whether you, you include, I saw caregiver groups, I thought that was a great idea. Um, lifelong learning is another one that I think could possibly work down there on a regular basis, annually. Um, I think the one thing is scheduling. I said this to Tricia, that when groups are going to do it, we're going to have to have a scheduler, probably the new facilities manager, to be able to schedule in advance. This is what's going to happen so that if your group, or recreation group, or historical society, or historical commission, or whatever group, we're going to have to have it charted so that we're going to have either hearing rooms or an open space, multi-purpose rooms or multi-purpose <coughs> rooms to be, able to, uh, to be able to use it on a regular basis seasonally. So you have programs, you do it from fe uh, September until the end of or spring, great. Or you're going to do it year round. At least it's do charted there so people understand this is the time that it's going to be used. Um, I also had seen some other possibilities that, you know, um, you know um, there's, there's so much potential that we could we go, go further. I thought what the p report had indicated about trying to have the observation in open space you know, green space <laughs> is a great idea, whether you put park benches down there, picnic tables, encourage people to stop there, uh, kind of like a tourist destination, uh, kind of maybe with a business or something to say, this is why you come to Situate. Take a look at this view. This is what we have. We have this community center that everybody can participate in. Um, and, you know, I, I just think as a board that in our duty that we, 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 we look, some people may resent it, but I think we're looking across all people in this town for the maximum use for the most people and I think that's our duty and that's what I'm encouraged to do and that's what I would, I would suggest the board should be doing um, I actually could go on with some other items that I had seen but I just think there's um, you know my feeling is these programs that you came up with that Florence you've been advocating for can be worked at this facility and should be worked at this facility going forward and um, if, and I know this isn't the case because I just heard the answer, if it was going to be used exclusively only for one group, I would say no to that group right out of the gate because it's not supposed to be that way. It's a community center. The youth have an opportunity to be down there just as much as recreation or just as much as the historical society or historical commission. So, and just as much as the Board of Selectmen need to be down there. So I just think that, um, I think I'm hearing that we are in agreement that programs that can be used down there should be used down there and we need to have it kind of coordinated to do it um, but if you're looking specifically to make that facility that structure a community a, um, a senior center I, I i have to tell you no i can't support that so those are my thoughts mr chair thank you john I, let, let me uh, say something myself here when this money was given to us uh, not given to us, let me change that. When we negotiated with the MBTA uh, probably almost 10 years ago for this mitigation money, uh, part of which is the money that we purchased Pier uh, 44 with, uh, this money was given to the entire town of Situate. It wasn't given to town hall, it wasn't given to the sports groups, it was given to the town of Situate to use for the benefit of all residents of Situate. Not residents who live on the train track, but all residents of Situate. I heard someone mention earlier that that, uh, that uh, they would not wait eight years, I believe is the, the, the number that they used, for a new senior center because the senior center on Brook Street is in terrible shape. But let me tell you, we put together, we recognize that, and we absolutely recognize that, just as we recognize that this building that you're in right now is in terrible shape. It's an embarrassment, if you want, if I can use that word. The police station next door, public safety, one of the most important buildings in town, way outmoded, way outdated, got to be replaced. Fire administration, the same thing. We have a school administration uh, headquartered in the high school, which just adds to a very crowded situation over there. So Gate School itself, Gate School itself, terrible, terrible condition for learning, for education, and for safety. So recognizing all that, recognizing all that, 
this board put together a plan that we thought would benefit all of the people I just mentioned and more, recreation and others, which I won't get into. We came up with a plan that hopefully will renovate Gate School, move the junior high to wherever, uh, Town Hall would go into Gate School, Fire uh, School Administration would go into Gate School, and the Senior Center would go into Gate School. Now, we're not talking eight years from now. We're talking maybe three, all right? Just as the Brook Street is in dire need to, to, to get a new building, so aren't the buildings I just mentioned also. So, you know, we're working on it, we recognize it. As I say, when when this money was given to us, it was given for the entire community. Uh, I've talked to a lot of people out in the street. I've to listened to people who made presentations in here. Uh, in order to use it as a community building, as I think the money was intended, I really do. Uh, it wasn't intended for one group. It wasn't intended to move town hall down there. It wasn't intended to just service the youth. It was intended to service as many people as we possibly could in that building. And I think that's what I'm leaning towards. I would like to see the programs that have to be, from the senior center point of view, from the seniors point of view, that have to be used down, that have to be uh, given down there, go by all means, do them and more. As much as the time will, will permit, there are groups, private organizations, whether they be Little League, whether they be the Course Foundation, whether they be historical organizations, who need meeting places or someplace to have a lunch or something like that, use it. Use it. And, and, and if you want to call it a, a community building, it's for community use, and that's the way I see it. And, and work out a, a, some sort of a schedule. We have a new facilities manager who, who uh, well, well I, I'm surmising might have a, a, a big part in scheduling everything down there. Let's use it for the entire community. And that's all I have to say. Tony? Just a couple quick things. Obviously, this is a very emotional issue. We understand that. And we have to try and take some of the emotion out as we make decisions. Um, as John said and, and, and Joe said as well, it's more than just intended. They specifically said you cannot move Town Hall to Pier 44. And that's Senior what... Senior Center. I'm sorry. Say that again? You said Town Hall. Yeah. Can't well, move to Town Hall. Town Hall. Right. You can't. And that's correct. Right. Right. You cannot. And we asked them about any department in town, which Council on Aging is one of them, and we've asked them numerous times, and we cannot do it. It's a restriction of the contract, regardless of what any of you think. It is. We asked them yesterday. So... It, it doesn't matter what you said he said to you because he said he didn't say it to you. So it is a restriction and that's what we have to, that is what, what we have to go by. Now, you know, the use of the building, whether the name is community center or senior center, I don't think should have a huge impact on what functionality the seniors can use there. We have the use of, of, of funds to repair the building and I think input from the seniors should be used in, in finding out what sort of facility can be best used there because I think that will roll out to other functioning groups as well. Do we need big rooms? Do we need small rooms? Do we need, you know, individual office space? We have, I mean, it's not even a usable building now. The bathrooms are terrible. There's no sinks. There's no water. So, so the building needs repair and it needs repair for all uses. And I think um, input from the seniors and input from other groups in terms of that and the design group and the uh, the pier 44 committee are important and that the building is going to be a working functioning building for all parts of the community and i would bet that the seniors are going to use it way more than any other group and i hope i hope that you do so that's my thank you okay kind of wrapping it up yeah in a no. moment and kind of wrapping it up from the board and yeah. then we're going to go back to the floor for no, it's, a brief it's, period of time as Tony said, it's an emotional thing, and I've calmed down a little bit now, and I apologize if I jumped on you over here earlier this evening. But what I, what I greatly resent here in this entire discussion is that we're being painted, this board is, and us individually, we're being painted as people who are insensitive to the needs of the seniors in your comments here. And um, 
You know, uh, Ms. Bernardi, when you, your, your statement in your email here is exactly on target. The programs listed above are not only deserving but necessary for our senior residents and in many instances the entire situate community. And you know, some groups might like more programs, some might like less, whatever, but you know, I get it and we get it. And Mrs. Reedy, you know, when you're standing up answering the question, everything you're saying is entirely accurate. This has been a long standing issue and so on. We understand that. But as these guys just said, you know, more eloquently and less emotionally than I earlier today, <coughs> the sense I'm getting right now is temporary access to this while we figure out the grand plan in the next couple of years. And if the grand plan falls apart in any one way, shape or another, then, you know, we got to go back and look at everything, not just the senior center, but Joe just listed off police, fire and everything else as well. So we're with you on this. But I get very personally offended when we're essentially accused of turning our backs on deserving subset of our, of our uh, fair town here. Just like we get asked many things by recreation and everything, and we're doing everything we can for all these different subgroups. But, you know, as John said, multi-use, as Tony just said, it's, it's, you know, we can't move departments there, period. We got legal opinions up and down the wall. We tried. We tried. But that's what council says. That's what MBTA tells us. It's not a matter of opinion. It's a fact. So we're with you on this. You have my support. We've been working. I've been working with previous people, you know, for the last eight years on trying to get new senior access. This is what I support, is using it for programs, as Florence was saying, having access, and we do as much as we can with that particular facility until we get other things sorted out. I don't want to make a decision right now as to what we're permanently going to do in three years with it, but right now, let's just keep moving ahead with this and ensuring access to everybody. And as Tony said, you guys are probably going to be the ones that are using it most anyways, but we can't, in fair conscience, shut out everybody else in town for you. And we're not, or at least I'm not. Thank you. Now, what I'm gonna do, is there anything else from the board? Other, <coughs> Sean? I might have something to say after the residents. Yeah, what, what I would like to do, is, uh, and I want to give everyone a chance, and I think everyone uh, has had a pretty good chance tonight and at other times to speak, but if there's any new information, please bring it forth. But to rehash what we've heard tonight and, and put it in different words, or rehash what we heard a couple of months ago, maybe in different words. It isn't really productive, I don't think, but Audrey. I agree. I thank agree. you, Audrey. If you agree, I gotta be right. My question is this, is there any money left from the mitigation yeah. that we could use to, for a kitchen? The kitchen will benefit the town. Yeah. Is there any money left from the mitigation that we could use to, for a kitchen? The kitchen will benefit everybody, not just the seniors, anybody that wants to have something going on down there. To, to answer your question, yes, there is money. Uh, I think around the, in the area of $700,000 to, to renovate or to do whatever that building, which could be a kitchen. Yep. Yes, the, the, answer, the answer is yes. Okay. Um, yes, someone knows yes, this. we can. Huh? Yes, we can, not yes. Not yes, we will. No, yes, yes we, we can. can. <laughs> I say yes, we will, yes. Sir, you had, you've been patient. Nothing new, I second. That was one of my comments, having spent $1.9 million to buy the building for a couple of dollars in. I know three people said money, money. We've already spent $1.9. Let's we'll spend a couple of bucks on the kitchen so we can get the uses that you're all talking about. I agree. Yeah. I would like to just give a perspective. And no disrespect at, at all and no second guessing, but everything, Mr. Dennehy, that you mentioned, we have someplace else. We have gyms, we have an auditorium at the high school, we have boats and pilings and piers all over the place, we have parks, we have the driftway, we have green lands down in the driftway. You didn't mention anything new that we don't already have, just more of. We have museums, we have historical societies. So to say let's put more in this new facility, it's okay, and I understand people would like to have it because maybe they're a museum freak or a voting freak, but we have it. That's just so as you go forward, think about it. We have it. You have to tell us your name and your I'm dress, sir. Bernardi, I'm a, uh, Her husband. Related to that woman. I and I'm, not, I'm a math teacher at Sedgwick High School. And I see all of the facilities used at the high school for all kinds of events. And so when you say we have problems in this room to meet, you know, I'm meeting up there with Shore and all yeah. kinds of things in the 
library. Lots of room up there to do it. And I know you and I sat together on the water committee one day over on the other side of the harbor. There's lots of room over there. We don't need another building to hold those kinds of meetings. So, Mr. Bernardi, you're suggesting that everything I suggested, we as a board should discount and not do it all. So that's what you're saying. No, that, that's what I'm asking. No, I did not. Okay, so you think it should be used in conjunction with? I beg your pardon? Most of the things that I suggested should not be used down at Pier 44. So that's what you're suggesting tonight. I just want to make sure. I said every one of them could be used at Pier 44, but what I am saying is we already have at least one or many places, multiple places to launch boats. To go outside to a green place on the walk on the driftway to fish. I take my grandkids down there. We have lots of places to put boats and kayaks in the water. That's all. I'm saying. So you're saying you're agreeing then? We could use that for what I'm I suggested then. We could, but I'm saying why are we doing one more? So don't do it, in other words. I'm saying you ought to think about how many places do we need to launch a boat? Yes. I think that's a question I'm posing as you go through your study. And Mr. Norton said, you know, we've talked about it and all these things. That's all I'm bringing up. Uh, Ruth. Ruth Kelly, uh, 450 Country Way. In listening to you gentlemen each give your own little version, I heard a repetition over and over, which I don't agree with, is that the seniors want this building called the Senior Center. They want it just for themselves. I, I would say no senior wants that. We all want a community building that can be used for the whole town with a place in it for seniors. And so I don't understand why I think five of you said it's not going to be a senior center. We don't want a senior I, I, center. Then I think, I think we have a deal. I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, pretty impressive, saying pretty much, pre wait a minute, you're saying pretty much what I heard, I think. But said, let's. They all said senior center. And none of us are saying senior center. Well, Another thing is, I do go there and I use the building and it's fine and the scenery is beautiful. We must have a telephone. The cell phones don't work there. It's mm -hmm. very vital. The other thing is... We'll uh, deal with that. <laughs> the other thing I've forgotten already. <laughs> I'm, I'm emotional. As we'll, you. we'll have a class for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just for that exact thing. Oh, the kitchen. The kitchen has to be there for all these people. We, we, we may not disagree on that. Yeah, I mean, you've got to rent a hall. You've got to have a kitchen. Yeah, we brought that up. That was just... All right, let's start to wrap it up. If you haven't spoken, I'd like to get someone who hasn't spoken. All right. Go ahead. Before you um, go on with this, I'm yep. Joanne Ball. First thing in, Meals on Wheels is not done by the Seniors Center. It is right. done by the South Shore elders. Right. And before you even think about them going into that building, they have to have certain state requirements in that kitchen that have to be followed for them to use it. And that is something that it would cost, I'm, I, I'll admit, it would cost a lot of money to follow that. Secondly, I want to correct you all on something. The Situate Historical Society does not need a building. And I live with the situate president of the Historical Society. <laughs> and they have more than enough buildings to be able to have meetings in. So don't put them in that bracket of they need a building, because they don't, because they've got the room. If I, if I listed the Historical Society in my list, I will apologize and take it back. All I was, the point I was just trying to make, and thank you for being as picky on it as you were, <laughs> The point I was just trying to make, there are a lot of organizations in town who I need it, that. and I will subtract the Historical Society yeah. out of that group. Everyone but the Historical okay. Society can use the building. <laughs> Maggie, last question, only because yeah. you're Thank mad. You. I just um, want to say, it's somewhat unfortunate that it got a little bitter here, because I think both sides, what I'm hearing, are for the same thing, um, wanting to have that building accessible for the senior program. I do want to suggest that unless it's, you can kind of guarantee blocks of time, a program can't work. So as long as there can be a commitment, um, no, a sure. scheduling long out, you know, for nine months or whatever, how long a yeah. program takes to run, then it won't work. But I, I don't see why it can't be that way. I don't see anything you gentlemen said that are against that. And, um, and I, as I say, as far as the kitchen, that would be wonderful for everyone. And there isn't a place to hold functions large functions cheaply, having tried to run them for different organizations in the past, so that would be great. Only one question, which is not now for discussion. Were the 
senior center to be sold, are those funds available to the town to be used on this building? On, on the on, on the, the community center. 344, I would go to the general fund, Tricia. I mean, I don't need. I don't know. I don't know if we have an answer for that now. But I'm just saying, at the point, of, rather than keep that building going, wouldn't there be a cost savings if there could be offices used during the day? Well, once a permanent home is found for the senior center. Even before permanent, I mean, could you just condemn that building and be done with it? Well, no. But then you'd have no. One. Yeah, no, 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 no. You can't do that. Asking no. you to decide that. No. Tonight, I'm but just, the but the other question when you uh, said when you said, if I just may respond quickly, please. when you said that. Um, you know, sorry, things that got sort of animated because we're all in agreement. But in I, don't need I know what you mean. No, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, but to be honest with you, it's 8:30 at night now. This is exactly the way it's been earlier today and for the last several months. As Florence just said, you've been running a lot of programs there, and there's been 100% access to it when you call up and work with the scheduling. So really, nothing's changed. Well, I think that's great. Yeah. I, that's what I'm kind of it, which is the way it's been for months. Yeah, and I think. It's Relax and be able to program it. Couldn't agree with you more. You could get close that other building, so it's not trying. That's a separate issue, you guys. That's that's a whole separate issue. Thank you, thank you all for your input. I really, really appreciate it. Now, I said thank you all for your input. We've gone through it. Don't thank me because I don't take thanks. He well, sir, I'm, I, you may not take thanks, but you're going to have to take this. The discussion on this has stopped, okay? I'm not going to talk about that. Okay, that if you can't talk about that, you can't talk about anything else, because that's the agenda item we're on, uh -huh. okay? Now, I, I try to be respectful to you. Try to be respectful well, to us. Well, when I get older, then you'll be respectful. I'm, I'm getting pretty close <laughs> to where you are, pal, all right? You're not talking... Well, you're a hell of a long all right, thank you very much. All right, thank you. Now, we've had uh, a full discussion on this. We've had a full discussion on it. Uh, again, we've discussed it for months and months and months. It has to come to a close sometime, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we could be here till midnight rehashing the same things. I don't think anybody wants that. Uh, we won't get any older. Uh, the board, what are your thoughts? Uh, final thoughts and a motion. I don't. Do we need a motion? We're just continuing with the same. Well, I'd like before. to have a motion. Let's I'd like some to closure. There's been too have much some closure closure on this. All right. Let me say something. <clears throat> Immediately have landlines brought in. Com that's right. again. Computers, that's a misnomer. Whatever that's has to be done to, to make for. to make this office work. People run businesses from thousands of miles away. I think we can run. I know what someone's saying. They can run eighth of a mile apart they should be able to the other thing and on that telephone just on that point Sean see if they can put in some kind of like extension on the building for cell service so you might be able to it would take a town, John. It would, it would take a, a cell service in that area. I, I don't think it's going to work. arrangements made so. to have a landline yeah. there already. We can do a landline. No, what, what I'm saying is you can, because I live in that area, you can put on the roof of your homes. You might be able to get a bar, too. In other words, oh, it, it right. increase it. So I'm just saying we should explore it, because you, 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 we might be able to. And frankly, building that, if we're able to get cell phone and landlines, it's beneficial for we both. Can do a land, we can do a, a landline. Good. And I'm just, it, it seems to me like the, the spirit of the audience is to open up, make it more accessible for, this, for these groups. That's, in my opinion, that's not long term. Long term might end up being at the gate school. It might end up picking up that set of $200,000 plans we have, dusting it off and building a new one. So that's all I want to say. And then continue. The, the, if you're looking for a motion. I would like a motion. I'll, a motion. I'll, I'll make them all move, move that. The Board of Selectmen endorse the continued use of the Pier 44 building for multiple functions used by multiple departments and organizations in town, including those from the Council on Aging. Um, this policy shall remain in effect until the um, Grand plan, can we fill in that? Well, I think what we need to do, and we'll do to that. interrupt for one I second. I just want to make it to clear. Start, I think what we have to do is start the committee, the Pier 44 committee, yes. on phase two. Correct. So I think we have to endorse that we want it to be a community center 
and pass it back to the committee so that they can begin phase two of their project. Okay, I but I, I agree. I'm not on ready. On top of on and the sure. Back of now I might be outvoted on this, but I'm not ready to make that yet because I was under the impression this discussion here tonight was only on what to do until the grand plan gets finalized or tossed, <coughs> and because I don't know, I have my own personal top three are completely dependent on the grand plan. Because if the grand plan includes a community center at Gates, community slash senior center, then why do we need it down here at Pier 44? Grand plan so, does not include a community center at Gates. A senior center at Gates. Senior center at Gates. A senior center at Gates. So if, we, if the grand plan includes a senior center at Gates, we don't want it down at the Pier 44 building. It's not. It won't be at a community it'll, center it'll be, at Pier 44. It'll be, it'll be at Gates. If, I'm confused. Maybe it's late. Hold on, folks, please. I'm just trying to understand what's going on. I think if I the th grand plan will have a senior center at Gates and a community center at Pier 44, which is what we're endorsing. Why right wouldn't now. we want to have a community? See, this is the, this is the short term versus long term. That I think we should really only restrict my personal view. is just that we should only discuss the short term now because why wouldn't we want to have a community center up at Gates too and use Pier That's 44 for something else? It's not what we're talking about right now. We're just talking about Pier 44. I know, but and I'm, I'm trying to parse it even further that I think we should only be talking about Pier 44 temporarily until the uh, grand plan gets figured out. Why wouldn't we want, for example, I mean, a separate, admittedly separate discussion could be why wouldn't we want to have a community center and a senior center up at Gates with everything else? I, I think you've got a point, but I think what I'm, the reason why I'm saying with Tony is that the original charge that we had charged Tricia to put together on the whole study, there was the first phase, second phase. And I don't think, unless we're going to alter what we had voted back in the past about it, um, and think you're looking for a temporary, that, that would be something that maybe the committee would take a look into, Rick, and say, okay, this is what we're looking at. Because, I mean, the idea of what they're suggesting in the feasibility study of saying, do we tear down the building altogether, rebuild it on the other side of the parking lot and do something, that's something that they can take a look into and further explore. Or whether they keep the building as a whole and then take a look at the multiple uses that we are now directing them to take a look at. But I understand that, but if we move them to the phase two, that, re that requires, and maybe I'll be outvoted, but that requires we have to finalize phase one, which means we have to identify what we permanently want to use the Pier 44 site for. And I'm not willing, maybe well, I'll be outvoted, but I don't want to. What's permanent? Uh, what's permanent? Four years? Ten years? Well, if we're going to. If we're going to renovate a building and put 700, right? Yeah. I think yeah. um, if we're going to renovate a building and put $700,000 into it, I don't want to do that for three years. Right. But I, I don't I, mind putting right. 50 grand right. into a committee. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, into a kitchen. I don't mind putting 50 grand into a kitchen that we right. can then use for three or four years. I'm fine with that, but I don't want to identify the Pier 44 spot as a permanent location regardless of what the grand plan says i i guess that's now maybe we just disagree which is you well, know my thought whatever. is you're not going to make the grand plan is not going to have a senior center slash community center the grand plan is going to be the senior center i mean they're going to have their own unique single use function space correct so that's what they're going to have at I'm Gates. Fine with that. and they'll still be able to use the community center for whatever they want but there's not going to be a senior slash community center at gates um so that's why i think i'm ready to proceed by saying that's going to be a community center and to put the effort and the money and the um repair work to that building to turn it into Could you guys right please now. hold it down so that that's my thought, and I don't think yeah. the grand plan is going to have you know at some um, point. I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, Go ahead. No, no. I said the, the grand plan is going to have a senior center, period. No. And I'm fine with that aspect of it, but I I I don't want to an, anoint <coughs> your 44 site as a permanently a community center at this sitting. So what what do you think it would be in your short short term if the grand plan fails? What do you think that building would then be? If the grant plan fails, yeah. uh, then I think we would need to consider it being a community center or a community center slash senior center or a multifunction building is sort of what John was saying. But 
there's a lot of real, I mean, we had Stan Humphreys on this committee and there's a lot of real issues in here. If we outlined in here, if we, for example, if the renovations cost more than, don't totally right. quote me, but if the renovations cost more than 600,000 or something like that, then we have to raise the building, raise, elevate the building up eight feet or something like that. And that's gonna change the entire cost, you know, feel for the place and so on. So if we're gonna use that building forever, I'm just going to say 10 years because that's longer than three or four years of the grand plan time frame here. If we're going to use that thing for 10 years, it, it needs to be a, a different discussion, I think. It but has to I be that, as a building, it has to be that exact building that's there significantly renovated. I'm not... Well, I that. think the three buildings that you said that it would be if the master plan fails are all the same. Senior slash community, community, or multi-use. I think that's all what we're talking that's all one thing and that is the community essentially center. another thing I would like to consider and discuss over the long term would be tearing it down and putting a park up well yeah. that that's what we're there's talking a, about right now well you see I didn't know we were talking about that I thought we were only talking about pending grand plan If the grand plan fails I wouldn't want to do that if the grand plan passes I would want to do that all or right. I would want that to be in the discussion there are a lot of people in that a lot of people in the survey and a lot of the options were in favor of tearing it down Mm -hmm. Well, couldn't we... Couldn't so that's why I don't want to get into all that until the grand plan. Couldn't we make a motion tonight that would keep everyone here on the board happy, happy uh, if the grand plan passed? It would give, the opportunity might be there to, to, to change the use of a community center. I, mean, I don't know what it would be. <coughs> The only problem I, with I that is, I, I, only, what I appreciate what you're trying to do, the, Joe. I really the, only, do. the only problem that I'm looking at is that could take could be another year and a half, 18 months, two yeah. years, yeah. Uh, conservatively. And I, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, what are we going to do with the building presently? Right now it's we being used use. portion, but it's not being maxed, up, maxed out in the possible uses that we could over the next two years conceivably open it up to. So, I mean, I, agree. I, I guess that's why I kind of see, say, okay, so what was the original, <laughs> what was the original charge that we had? And I, so I, I don't know if you think maybe we, we put it move it to the next meeting and discuss it further or no, if they, no, I, I'm no, like we've we've waited two that's years. why I, that's why the motion I was trying was just to keep it for the next couple of years I'm all in favor of because John your point is exactly right Joe I appreciate what you're trying to do in terms of get everybody on board um, um, but you know I'm all in favor of you know, putting, and I'm just making this up, 50,000 or whatever into a kitchen to keep it working, to be used for a bunch of different things, seniors, other rec, everything else, for two years, three years. If it ends up with the grand plan passes and it ends up being a community center, then that's money that's spent fine then. But if the grand plan passes and we put more things in there, then it's not a huge amount of money, you know, over three years. Why don't you, but tr maybe why don't you try a motion and, and see where it goes, all right? I mean, we can... Well, well, I, I, that was kind of butchered. But let me just try. Let me try something shorter. I know it's hard for me to do. Um, move to temporarily continue use of the Pier Forty Four building as a multifunction facility for town committees and organizations until the grand plan is. Um, uh, um, decided, uh, resolved, until the viability of the grand plan is resolved. Why do we even have to add that? Just stop it short. Just stop short of that. Stop short of it? Well, then, then we could revisit it at that point. That's right. Something yeah. else good. <laughs> <laughs> but again, look, if it's four to one, I mean, we don't have to be 5-0. Well, well, no right? one seconded really that. So. No yeah, one's exactly. Seconded. That's where we're going. Happy <laughs> That's where we're going. <laughs> we would like to have a, a, a That's where we're going. Can yeah. I ask? Yeah. Yeah. But if it doesn't happen that yeah. way. Well, you finish a motion. It really doesn't have too much to do with it. Yeah, I'm just done. Like, All right, he's done. The motion that we <laughs> made, I guess, I think. Kim, could you read it back? Yeah, oh, yeah and, st and stop it where he said. And stop it where he said. Thanks, Sean. Can I try a motion? The second one. Yeah, we're we'll just here. Tomorrow, 
Sure. And you could, yeah, and you could whack that last part if you wanted, Sean. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I'll second it. That's been seconded for discussion. Uh, Tony. Yeah, I mean, my only point is we've waited two years to get to this point, and I don't really want to wait another year and a half to do it. I'd like to, I'd like to improve the building with the money that we have, put a kitchen in, put some That's bathroom in, put some rooms in, make it a real facility that can be used by the seniors and the Boy Scouts and Little League and course and everybody. Not historical society. Everyone Not but the historical, historical society. society. <laughs> and because they need 300 people in a spot, we want to jam them into the little red schoolhouse um, and um, you know and get the committee back on track with going with phase two of the project of which we then have to, I mean this is still a long part they got to come back it took them a year to come back with the first phase come back with phase two we look at it we see if we like it and we move forward with this so may not like it I mean they you know right so that's what I would rec that's my opinion okay we have mr. Murray's motion and seconded and we're still in discussion? Yes. We'll still, yeah, we're still in discussion. I just want to make very clear that my motion, and I'm not disagreeing with you, but my motion did include the fact that we would still be using that center for everything, we, that building, everything we've been talking about. So we're really talking about the time frame over which this is active. So if I voted, go ahead. All right, the motion's been made and seconded. Uh, is there any further discussion from the board? Just would like to see if we could direct Tricia to ask the uh, facilities manager to give us an estimate. And this has nothing to do with the motion, but okay. Tony mentioned it and it was, you know, give us an estimate what it would cost to build out the kitchen, a basic kitchen. That's what the, that's what phase two is. Right. Yeah. Part of it, yeah. All right. Either way. But you can't use the kitchen if you don't have bathrooms and you don't have... Ba Tony, the bathrooms are there. They have to be remodeled, well, but the bathrooms all are there. The right. 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 All right. That's it. Okay, we, we have a motion and we have a second. Is there any further discussion? No. No further discussion. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Aye. Three to two. Okay. Uh. Aye. It passes. I don't know what we passed. But. I, I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay for it to fail. It's a uh, vote. Being a. Uh, being a, a, a yes vote on this. I want to put this thing to bed. It's all. I'm not, we've had enough of it. Uh, being a yes and affirmative mo vote I can move for reconsideration I'd like to do that at the time I'd like to move that the vote be reconsidered I'll second the, re re the, the chair's request to reconsider uh, all in favor aye 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 so now we're back, back Kim can you please motion. read the motion again <laughs> my motion the, original one? Uh, the one that you just read again please Correct. That's the motion I made. Motion. And, and Sean seconded. Uh, does Sean want to second the motion? Oh, sorry. No, I make that motion again. Yeah, you made it again, so I need a second. I S second. Second. <laughs> I just did it. <laughs> no, I know you did. No, no. You Joe, to Joe, asked, Joe asked to rescind <laughs> the vote, so I just wanted way. to make sure we all, all were right. clear. All in favor of Mr. Murray's motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. 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 It went down three to two. I'll entertain another motion. Move to um, ask the Pier 44 committee to um, proceed with phase two of their project in using Pier 44 as a community center. I'll the second. Motion's motion has been made and seconded. Discussion? How's that different than the first motion? Uh, you know, the, the committee's going to continue. This is a more permanent solution this is for permanent. the permanent. This, this is for the committee. I, I look at it because of the initial charge that we gave two, two years ago is what we said. We were going to have a committee put together to take a look at the potential uses and do a feasibility study. Right. That's number that. one. That's, that's the first component that's been done. The second was we were charged to put a committee together to now take a look at what we're charging All right. to do. All right. okay. And I just All think right. that by putting in a temporary uh, provision, which I, I, I understand where it's coming from, you know what, I think it's, we've got to make a decision on it. And 
just seemed to me it's a little amorphous. Here we're charging the committee to do what we're telling them to do. Community center is what we want. Take a look at it, come back and present it to us. Talk about the priorities of a kitchen, feasibility of a kitchen versus in the bathrooms and all these other components so that they'll take a look at it and say this is the most important aspect. The size of the kitchen's got to be reduced because in order to have the bathrooms and the cost for all that, this is what we can spend on. And the right. curbside appeal and all this other stuff. All right. So. Motion's been made and seconded. Mr. Vignani's motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, opposed. All right. Four to one, it passes. Next. Can, can I know I? the press had a couple of questions, and I, I apologize not getting to you during the thing, but it was just too so much going on. We're going to be wrapping it up. We're more than happy to answer your questions. Can I ask a few questions? Yes. No. Um, <laughs> Providing. What happens between now and when the Phase 2 committee finishes its work? Are we allowing other functions to open up there again? Are we programming a budget? Um, what's I, happening between now and you get phase two's report with the building? I, I, That'll have to go on a future agenda, I think. Yeah, I okay. would say that put it on a future agenda, exactly, but, but start thinking in terms of a budget, yes. Okay, and just um, two points of information for folks, since I sense there may be a mass clearing after we move on, is this an important update on what's happening at Gates and the public facilities master plan um, under item 12 and the other thing uh, lest folks be um, misinformed arrangements have been made to put a landline there and a defibrillator and the Council on Aging has had a key to the facility for the last two months so I just wanted to point those out um, and that's all I have thank you great thank you and thank you all <coughs> uh, I gotta can I make a suggestion while well, before you guys leave before you leave, can we go to number 12 right now before we do these things that is going to bore everybody and just go over the facility plan real quick? Sure, by all means. Yep, yep. They're not going to listen anyways. So if you're interested in the master plan, that's what this item is about. So um, the board has um, my report for September 18th, 2012, and there's only one item on it. Um, as I indicate here, Durkee Brown, the architect who was hired to perform the structural analysis of the original part of the Gate School, was engaged after the 375000 was appropriated at town meeting towards the um, public facilities master plan to do the structural assessment on the remaining portion of Gate School. And they presented those preliminary findings to the Public Building Commission last Wednesday. Sean was in attendance as well. So now we have a full structural analysis of Gates School. The remaining money that was left over from the community preservation funds that did the analysis of the original portion of the building was done to program the building. So they took existing square footages, they took additional buildings and departments and administrative offices that the board would like to go into the um, gate center and preliminarily conceptually programmed all that space. In short, Gates has 93,000 square feet. The programming that they preliminarily proposed has 70. So that's 23,000 square feet that is still for additional um, use. That being said, that includes all town hall offices, water administration offices, the recreation department, and an entire um, senior center and some of the preliminary stuff has a community center in it. Um, those um, preliminary um, schema um, conceptual designs were, um, feedback was given at the meeting and they have, are doing that work now and will report back to the Public Building Commission, but at the board's October 2nd meeting, Durkee Brown will be here to um, discuss the um, <coughs> what I just told you in brief and be able to share with folks again it's very preliminary you're going to appoint hopefully most of the steering committee um, to uh, at your October 2nd meeting as well that will have uh, a number of representative people including the council on aging as stakeholders in the process to also work with the public building commission in designing gate school 
for a future use. And that's going to be in conjunction with um, the school study and feasibility that we'll be discussing about town meeting coming up. So um, less folks think it's eight or ten years away before um, we have a decision one way or another on this master plan. We are moving very, very quickly. We already have the gate stuff in place, full structural and conceptual feasibility. We'll be moving a town meeting on the educational component and the public safety complex. So um, I just wanted folks to know that. And I'm happy to answer any questions. I just was add, didn't they add about 10 or was it 25% to each department when they came up with their 70,000 square feet? They added 25% just for office space for like town hall. Um, they were looking, we have to get them the original council on aging plans for the facility that was proposed on Branch Street. But there's other things that we've added such as additional meeting room space that's at a premium. And um, the conceptual plan that um, you'll see on October 2nd completely separates the Council on Aging from the rest of the building, even though it's connected to the building. So there's a feeling of complete separateness. But through an elevator, they could access municipal offices. So um, Kitchen facilities. Kitchen facilities How as well. How many square feet? It ranged from 10 or 8,000 down to 2,000 square correct. feet for the Council on Aging. So they showed us three different proposals. Right. So. And again, it's conceptual just as a first wave. So um, there's been no decisions made. That's what the steering committee and the public building commission is to bring back to the board and the school committee and the town and town meeting. Okay, Com someone has a hip. I just have one question. Only the Habib report that was done for the schools, is that able to be incorporated? Are we re I just know that we're restudying things. And I don't know how. Remember, the, uh, we talked about it so much. Um, several years ago, but it was a very well done. It might be dated, but is that been brought before you? And I'm aware of this. It was a I'm well aware of the school. Habib report. The architect had it as the first report. The Habib report is significantly deficient, deficient as it relates I, I, to I, Gates I, School. Oh, I would expect yeah. that. I just wanted to make sure yeah. that, that has All the reports and studies, yeah, have been looked at. But Gates took all the school buildings, and what it did is it essentially did a building footprint of each of those schools and looked at it to the degree that it was providing um, the educational needs at, related to the facility. So the structural pieces of it, as far as systems, heating, lighting, um, structural components wasn't as um, uh, specific as what the square footage was for grade five or uh -huh. stuff like yeah. that. I mean, it was very helpful for a baseline, but I think it was 2004, so it really needed to sort of go to another level in terms of the systems in the building and looking at it comprehensively as well as the fact that the building code has changed so much now with seismic and earthquake um, requirements to make sure that that building had good bones. Rick. Yeah, um, notwithstanding the, the vote that just happened regarding the uh, community center, I have two comments about with Tricia what you just said. One is I'm very pleased to hear that the preliminary designs have a solid wall, private entrance and all that sort of thing with the senior center at the Gates location because I think that's an important thing at least for a significant fraction of the seniors so I, I certainly support that. I was also pleased to hear you say that some variations of what they were talking about included potential planning in terms of square footage of a community center up there. I think it's important to continue with that as an option by that group because we don't know what the phase two study is going to come up with that we just voted in a majority, the majority is of us just voted in for the Pier 44 site. We don't know what the implications are from phase two. It might not work and so we want to have that still available to, to potentially revisit. So I would, dis I would just suggest that regardless of what we just voted here and not to go against that vote because it was a majority vote, but to still keep the community center square footage up there if at all possible. I think the timeline's going to work out that we're going to learn about that at the same time we're learning about phase two anyways, but we just need to still keep both options in the air should phase two that was just voted not work for either financial or regulatory reasons. Thank you. Uh, Trisha, is that, that's it on your report? Yeah, I, just, I, just, I guess I just want to say sort of um, parathetically that this is the first board 
in eight years to talk about public facility needs. This is the first board to exercise leadership on the, the challenge we have on all our public facilities. And I think that sometimes gets lost in the mix that you are actually trying to do something about it. And this board was subject to a lot of criticism when it proposed buying Pier 44 with the mitigation funds. So I think it's a happy problem we're all here fighting over who gets to use it because this board got a lot of criticism for even proposing that we buy it. And I just think sometimes folks in the media need to be reminded of that. Thank you. And I think you just did. <laughs> well, uh, we get criticism for brown water, too. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you, sir? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, the next item is open and close the November 13, 2012 special town meeting, and also we will be voting the articles individually. Uh, I will take an amend, uh, <coughs> a motion now to open and close the meeting. Move the board of select and vote to open the November 13th, 2012 special town meeting warrant at 9.01 p.m. and to close said warrant at the adjournment of tonight's meeting. Second. The motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. You have in your packet a list of the proposed articles for the special town meeting. Looks like there's about 20 of them, give or take. Uh, we're going to go through these individually, uh, as we have to do, to vote to support or not to support. Or uh, I would imagine, um, hold for further discussion if that's... Yes, um, the advisory committee is much more organized than we are, but, um, and your town administrator, given um, the time frames. But we're very much in flux because we still haven't closed FY12 yep. in terms of trying to project where um, we might have available funds to appropriate and also some budgetary adjustments and, t and town departments that have bubbled up since the April town meeting. So some of them I think I can get a consensus from the board that we're fairly sure they'll need to go on the warrant. But um, the other things will have to be sort of ironed out, and I need to get a sense from you if you need more information so you can um, deal with them October 2nd and vote October 16th. Are these, what we're doing tonight then will be just to include these in the special time meeting, we'll vote later on? Yeah, or, just yeah. a preliminary review. I've made some suggestions of things that might better yeah. be held over to the a yeah. annual town meeting. There's two planning board articles, uh, one of which is extremely lengthy. Um, that we might want to discuss, but we can just go in the order. In the order they can do. Yeah, here. Right. So I am confused. Are we just voting whether to put these on or not? Or are we no. voting yes or no to approve? No, I'm not asking you to do either. I'm asking you to give me a strong sense of whether or not you think they should be held to the annual town meeting. Okay. So All right. To help Number the one. Why don't okay. I do this? Why don't I go? I'll Got read it. them. Make yep. it easier. Uh, the first one is the fiscal year 12 unpaid bills. Yes. All right. Special. No problem there. Mm -hmm. Put it on the, yes, on the yes. special. Uh, secondly, the treasurer's transfer from personal services to purchase of services, $20,000. That's due to the, the higher than the new treasurer, I assume. Yes. 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 Fire department budget, uh, $96,000 to personal services. That's the arbitration award has to be done. Yep. Sometime. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Conservation Commission transfer. Yep. Yes. 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 Yep. Special veteran services increased claim costs. Yes. Yes. That amount's now up to twenty-eight thousand. We now have thirteen clients. Twenty-eight thousand for the ESCO audit. Um. Yes. That's not. That's just a transfer, not out. That's available. That's yep. we appropriated. We can reappropriate. Right. Yeah. So yes. I just didn't want it hanging out there. Uh, I, I guess that's yes. Cable budget. Uh, Creation, reconciliation. This is established. Uh, establish a budget for them. Would that be safe to say? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, transfer from retained earnings for the commercial peer. We 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 were awarded a grant of yes one yes. seven thousand. We have to come out with eighty thousand. Yeah. This is the yes. yep. yep. Uh, a loader from the transfer station. 
availability of funds still has to be confirmed. So if they're in the retained earnings for the transfer station, you want to use it? Or is this a new allocation or just is this no, a new No, what capital happened project? is they asked for an FY13, and um, I didn't give it to them because the water department needed a new one, and they w expected it could go another year, and it died. So um, they need to get that now. And they're renting it right now at like 7500 a month. So um, once I get the amount in retained earnings confirmed that I feel comfortable that that amount can be transferred out, I'll put it on. So it died. Gone. It's gone. We're renting right. another one right Rent, now. Yes. Rent to own? Yes. Thank you. Right. So, that's, yes. That's in. so that's in. Okay. Uh, where were my budget reconciliation, water, sewer, work, much cost your pond? Yes. That's just a housekeeping. Place of water lines. Uh, public building feasibility, <coughs> design for school, safety, gates, next steps. Oh, this is the next steps of the Gates plan. So, yep. I guess we have to go Master forward plan. with that. I think. Yes. Right. Um, I, if I may have a moment to talk about that, the board received um, the article that the board, the school committee voted last night for consideration by this board. Um, the amount they are requesting is seven hundred and fifty thousand for the feasibility study. Um, I spoke with Joe earlier today about two things. Um, one is to have the somebody from the school talk on October 2nd about how that $750,000 is arrived at. It involves an educational improvement plan and a school improvement plan, which also includes design and engineering for a new facility. Um, but the second <coughs> part of that is because we are moving to, um, universally in tandem with the public facilities master plan, mm -hmm. I would also like to include in that article money for the public safety complex. We already have the gates going. We have the, um, I mean, we already, the gates for programming is town hall. Now the educational piece for a middle school. So the last piece that we need to now weave in is the public safety. I think that involves a discussion with the school folks so we're all on the same page. Um, roughly, we're looking at the 750 for the school, about 125 for design and engineering for public safety complex. However, that's all in. We have $360,000 still that we appropriated at the last town meeting. So when we net all that out, we're talking about um, 500,000. So if I can just make it clear, and I hope this gets reported as such, this is not a Gates feasibility study. This is really the master plan feasibility study this is the public public facilities feasibility study it involves public safety it involves school departments it involves gates it involves everything else as well right and I guess um, just quickly we had a conference call on Friday with the MSBA because the the linchpin to all this is to get it in the pipeline for MSB re MSBA yeah. reimbursement of almost 41 percent for a new middle school. Yeah. So that's really to get in that process as quickly as possible. That's going to, from which everything flows. And right. um, and that's what town meeting is going to be to start that process. Yeah. And if I could just add the feasibility plan that she's talking about, that is three quarters of a million dollars, is mandatory to get the MSBA money. Mm -hmm. So it's not optional. You have to go through those steps if you want to get in line to get 41% right. of the. It's time. mandatory and to even get in line. Right. Now the scale. And they do reimburse 41% of that. that as well. So that's part of the okay. construction cost. So now the scale of this is something I usually like to put on the annual, but we need to get this going and this saves us six months and gets us in with the MSBA and everything else as well. So I'm fine putting this on the special. Right. Superintendent McCarthy actually thought it, we would be a year out before we can even have this discussion. And in fact, the funds for the feasibility would require an override. Um, so I think based on the board's fiscal conservancy the past few years, we're in a position to be able to fund that right away, which very much impressed MSBA during our conference call. Once we get the green light from MSBA, we have nine months to put a shovel in the ground. So again, this is not something that's many years off. We're really doing this as, as fast as we possibly can, and there's even with all the moving pieces. Great. 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 Yes. 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 Okay. And we'll have a dis further discussion on the funding in later meeting, right? Yes, October 2nd, hopefully. Uh, 
Enterprise fund retained earnings. Yes. That. What do you want to do with it? Do you want to? Yeah, I mean that's when revenues. Oh, oh you got to balance, balance it out. Yeah, you have to balance out. To balance it out. I'll have that for you October second. Creation of a capital stabilization fund, seawalls, recommended way to consider at the annual. You're going to. That's something I've talked with a few of you in terms of the seawall appropriation okay. having to be used every year and creating a mechanism for that and other big ticket capital items like yep. uh, the ladder that we have to buy next year is 750000 to appropriate into a fund over many years so that when we do have to buy it, it's not a million dollar hit. That's the conception, but conceptual idea behind that. Um, but I think it's better to do it in the context of the annual town meeting and the overall budget. How come, Tricia? How come? Yes. Um, because we have probably no money to put in it right now right. since we're nine I'm just, months you know, into I, fiscal we, year. we attended that meeting and, you know, they told them that this right. was in the works. Right. All right. And I don't, I cannot remember. But it's not going to. I think Tony promised him it would be in the special. <laughs> <laughs> How many votes did I lose that night? <laughs> Four um, million dollars. I, I think you said Tony. Tonight. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh -huh. the, <laughs> thing, the thing is you could create it, like specifically if we wanted to create it, at this special town meeting and we could move the seawall appropriation money into it now the problem is once you move it in it takes a town meeting to move it up so um, so we can create it it's just I don't know what we would use it seed money to fund it right now yeah. and then um, at the April town meeting this the April special town meeting move seawall surplus money in there that's really what it is is so it, the, with the override money, the seawall and roads money is in the operating budget, so it closes out every year. So they have to spend it, spend it. And seawall repairs, as you know, is very expensive, and the 200 or 400 that we're appropriating would close out. So we need a mechanism to roll that over so that we can do the big projects that cost 800 or a million dollars. So we maybe can talk a little bit more about that with May. I would before consider next at least mini. creating the fund. We can I was going to say, I, I agree. I think if, since we know we have to earmark a certain amount, let's, what, what's the use in waiting till the annual? We, are, we already have money that we're supposed to be putting in, so why not just put it in there and try to resist the temptation of using it some other way? I don't think you want to put it in because it may slow down a project right now, but you want to have it there so funds aren't lost in next the fiscal year. You can throw the excess in there. So we could create it and take a thousand from free cash, right. and then do in. administrative yeah. moving if, with rollovers at the April. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Uh, Got some. Okay, rollovers. so that's a yes. Yes, a yes. Okay. And finally, and the meals tax. Wait to consider at the annual. Probably a good idea. Yeah, I would agree. Annual. Yeah. Wait. Wait. Yes. Wait. Right. The, more, okay. the more discussion, the better. From the restaurants and residents, the more, the better. Okay. Wait, we'll wait on that. Yes, sir. Okay. All righty. Thank then you. Well, we there's some others here. Couple of oh, there's some others. others. Water Protection Resource District. There's a planning board. Uh, they want it now, do they? Uh, yeah, that's yeah. that's tied also okay. to our water withdrawal permit, and that's the one they've been working on quite a lot, and there's been revised drafts. I think they're going to be ready. The Water Resource Commission just met on it tonight. They're going to be ready for the for the uh, special and although I tend to like to put such bylaw changes on the annual this is time sensitive because it's related to our um, water withdrawal permit A village business overlay district so yes to the first one yes to the first one yeah and there any urgency on the second one I don't know I would suggest we have mr. Limbarker and Laura in um, it's a Big kind of, bylaw. It's a big bylaw. It is. I generally, like to have that. But yeah, I would we better talk about annual. that one. Unless I'll there's have, a compelling can, can reason we have not to. October second. We have a lot, uh, an agenda reserved for that now, right? Private yes. road. Okay. Private road betterments. Uh, creation of a revol revolving fund for. This for the is what, this what was the <laughs> the cart before the horse? Last meeting, you approved. Yep. The betterments. Yep. You have no funding mechanism to do it so that's what this would do so let's put it on yeah yeah put it on put it on and uh mullen rule mullen, mullen rule. rule of course we all know what that is help, help some of them out Trisha, right? rich mullen okay so <laughs> yeah, those um, people watching this is something out. you can do now or you may want to consider the annual town meeting it's a local option statute 
and essentially what it does is it allows a member of a board to participate in a hearing that's continued if he or she was not present at the first hearing, part of the hearing. I don't care. <laughs> you care. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't. Let's wait to the annual. Wait to the annual. Okay. But that came up just a couple of weeks ago yes, where yeah. one of the members was. Yep. That's why it's provided to you. Yep. So All right. That, okay, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> is there one more? There is one more. The veterans? Yeah. Veterans. The veterans. veterans. Right. Which one is that? The new material just given. Uh, there you go. Veterans Assistance Tax Bill Checkoff. Tricia? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm Veterans sorry. Veterans Assistance Tax Bill Checkoff. One more that's been brought to our attention. Oh, yes. Thank the you. special um, legislation. We received that today by the deadline for the board to receive warrant articles. Uh, what uh, the Veterans Services Council is asking is uh, for the board to adopt <coughs> in town meeting the option to have a checkoff um, on the tax bill that will allow people to voluntarily donate to the Veterans Services Council. Um, so what uh, Kim was able to do through the Treasurer's Office short, with short notice today is give you, my concern was there wasn't enough room on the tax bill to add another check off because we already have two. Um, and the um, vendor who does our payroll was able to quickly do a mock up and so there is room. So it's really the board's decision if they want to include that. Yeah. And this is additional months so, so if you want to donate another it's purely voluntary it's, it's voluntary right. but it's also on top of your taxes right you have your t it's, it's not in lieu right. of yeah <laughs> okay right. and why why would this need to go before the special not the annual is there some time sensitivity here um, there's not a time sensitivity the request came in today and the deadline for people to submit articles to you for your consideration was today So that's why okay. you have so just it. the sooner it's on the sooner people can, so check they can the get it on the tax sure Who yeah, requested no, just it? Uh, The veterans uh, agent Kim, on? I believe no, the, 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 um, advisory council. Council. Right, council the veterans right. advisory council yeah, 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 I'm uh, all in favor of it. I get no problem. Well, okay. I was just gonna say I think I'd like to hear more information about why they're advising it. I'm only saying it because are we setting a precedent to start putting on a on our tax bills options? And I'm not, I yep. see that we have the scholarship fund for schools, and we have educational fund because that was statutory, is my understanding, because you could do it. Is yep. that? I guess I just would like a little bit more. I'm not saying no at this point, but I, I think I'd like a little more backup as to why they're doing it. If the, if there's something that says on the statute you're allowed to do it. All right, fine, but um, is that they possible to have him come in to in talk? Yeah, I'd like to, you, all right? you know, you mentioned, Trisha, that this is that we have no more room in the tax bills for any more of these. I think you inferred that by saying he squeezed. Well, no, my question was, could we fit it and, on? And that was did. my first question. I guess question. historically these things, is, uh, although they're great ideas and, and everyone's, you know, thinks it's a wonderful idea, they don't raise a lot of money. And I would hate to see something, more and more things be put on here. And then when we come to the time that we, something we want to get on there that could really raise some money, there's no room in the tax bill. We've got other things here. Uh, Actually, in, in conjunction with that, I'd love to know how much money has been in the past year or two years to the scholarship fund and to the uh, it's been um, nominal. educational fund. Nominal. But Just we like can to know get that for those public amounts purposes. from the treasurer's office for your October 2nd good. meeting. Would you, okay, good. thank you. And also if there's a benefit tax-wise to check in the box, do you get? Right, no? there is. There is. There is. But be careful. <laughs> uh, okay. I think that does it. Yes. Uh, next is... Uh, other business announced wreaths across America vacants. Uh, announced the wreaths across America. Would someone like to do that? Sure. There's Mr. a letter Kelly? from. Uh, the one from Mr. Kelly? Yeah. Just announcing what it is. Wreaths across America. Oh, wait, you, okay. oh, thank you. Mr. He's, Young, Mr. Elitchfield, are you waiting around for, for this? I appreciate that. We, we, did, we volunteered to fill. Fill in for the members of the Veterans Council who are meeting also tonight. Why don't you give us an update on that wreaths well, across the, America? The Legion Post has been doing this wreaths across uh, 
America for what four or five years? It's three years. We've done three years. Um, and I think the last two years we've done 440 uh, wreaths in the uh, the veteran cemetery. Cudworth. Cudworth. Um, there we think there are somewhere over a thousand veterans graves in town. And I understand the uh, Boy Scouts are taking on a project to try to identify and map where they all are. So we'll really get a good handle on. And I think the council is looking to see if the town would consider budgeting for the balance of the thousand that we think are here now. So we're, we're, we're doing 440 out of our funds and they're looking for the town to, to pick up the, the 560 to make a thousand. Just to give you some numbers, um, mm -hmm. I bought them last year and we paid about $8 a wreath. Uh, so with a plain wreath with a bow on it. Look at a four or five hundred dollars. I think we spent a little over two thousand dollars the last three years I doing think, this. Uh, recommend if I'm wrong, Trisha. I think Trisha wrote a letter that nothing is budgeted. Nothing is budgeted for this. That's correct. For wreaths across America. So there was no budgeted money for this. If we wanted to consider it, we could. There's an ad adjustment to the veteran services. So. Um, the Veterans Services budget has tripled in the past three years, and um, I doubled it again for FY13, and we need to put another 28000 in it. That means it's going to impact the FY13 budget in other ways. So um, although, again, I think every request that comes to the board for veterans is worthy of consideration, this has never been something that um, has been funded from the veterans. It's been donated. And um, I do have concerns about the increase of this budget that we're trying to accommodate already with due respect to the needs. But our first and foremost obligation is to fund the subsistence report for the veterans that are coming to us now. And um, our staff needs to be doing that. So at this time, another appropriation out of the fiscal year budgetary cycle um, is it going to be a real challenge, I think. But for FY14, I would be happy to consider it. Could I? Has any thought been given uh, given to to privately raising these funds? Five hundred. We that, do. We do that. Wait, that's what we're doing now. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't so, seem like a, a, we're limited in how much we can do. Yeah. It doesn't seem like uh, a, a cause that too many people would say no to. You know what I mean? I would think that you could raise the money for this pretty easily for this year, and then we could look at the putting in the budget for next year that's my thought oh, go ahead. I, I, what's I, your is this um you, you're looking to do it annually ongoing right I, each I, year that's what, that, for that's the town right that, okay. that's the and so picture. trisha you're saying you could con maybe think about for the fy14 to, con to consider it but right now right. we're talking we're, about we're, is it how many steve two thousand veterans that would get wreaths we did 440 last year yes but how many thinking are there it's in about the town? a thousand total in the whole I town i think it's double that yeah. and then you so the, it's not so it's when do the wreaths when do you put them out do you put them out in the spring uh -huh. or it's the second saturday of december That's december a, it's a nationwide program it's for the is it for the holidays they assume the wreaths okay yeah. what i might also suggest um Touching base with the Chamber of Commerce, you know. I think um, Nico Offencycle, if he was here right now, I think that would be one person to touch base, just as an, a, from a private standpoint. I think we they'd do be willing to. We send out letters to a substantial number of the businesses in town. We don't get a whole lot of funding, but we have got some money to help pay for this. Plus, we raise money selling poppies and flags and so forth. And people are really generous in this town. I, I uh, am amazed at the amount of money we do raise. We do very well at the town uh, recycling facility. It's amazing. What yeah. It's the best place to raise money. And again, I'm not opposed to looking right. in the budget, but it's it's going to be hard enough to carve out. That's what the budget cycle's for, to, to do the, the additional appropriations we're doing now at town meeting. When you're looking to have this... Um, Obviously, the amount you need it by late oh, end of November. When we got to start uh, we ordering, find a vendor and buy wreaths and all that. Probably within the next three, four the, weeks. The Legion Post will continue to do what we've, what we've done in the past. And you have enough right now for this, this for is the initial. Really, from the the Veterans Advisory Council, I think they're looking more to see if the town would establish a budget budget for the future. That's the way I understood it. Okay. It was explained to me. 
as a fill-in for them. To <laughs> and, and do you have enough right now money for at least the current? So it's anticipating that there's going to be more from the um, investigation by the Boy Scouts. Is that well, what you're looking well, we at? Well, know, we know we're not covering a lot of the other okay. cemeteries. And, and, the and the other thing is it's going to take an immense amount of manpower because they're scattered all over mm. the Union Cemetery. It's going to take a while to, to research that, too, and find out exactly where the rest of the rest of is. Cutworth is easy. I, I mean, yeah, I, Cutworth is I, I would strongly tell you what touch base with me later and I'll talk to the chamber and we'll see from there but you know and we'll look into the budget put into the budget for next year next year would that be yeah, I'll, I'll look at it anyway I'm not guaranteeing anything but. right because my concern was when I saw it oh this looks good what's the cost impact mm -hmm. and and he told me there was a considerable amount of veterans I guess that don't have them because the donations only cover so much but it's not short Money. The reason we picked Cudworth is it is the official veteran cemetery. Yeah. There's right. a lot of veterans out there. It looks really nice today. We filmed it for the um, TV thing. Yeah, they did. We, oh, yeah, good. we spent a lot of time there. It really looks nice with the flags. So the answer is not no. Just right now, yep. really. let's, let's further take a look at it and let's try to find some other options. But we'll look at it in the future budget. Does that make sense? I, I think the, another reason we might have that number of a thousand that they buy flags for the cemeteries that may be the ones that are yeah. makes sense there's probably a lot that aren't yeah. mm. anything else from the board all right thank you right, thank, thank you, you for sir. waiting on the i would have moved you up if we could have <laughs> what's what we get for we'll volunteers that's that's, a, that's where you get the big bucks for uh what else was on other business i have a public, public buildings commission vacancy i just want to announce there appears to be a, uh, yeah, we have a, a, a memo from Ed DeSalvo asking if this, uh, to see if a fifth member has been found for that committee. And we certainly want to, if uh, we haven't got one, and it sounds like we don't have any applicants, again, put the word out to our friends in the newspaper that we're looking for. This would be a great article to say that they need somebody on the public buildings for the strategic plan of the buildings of gates, the public building, uh, safety building, and, you know, you want to be in community involved. center. Great article and, you know, need another person, so. Move uh, the board of select and vote to accept the regular session minutes for February 15th, 2012. Second. Uh, discussion all in favor? Aye. 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 Move the board of select and vote to accept the executive session minutes for September 4th, 2012. Second. Motion be made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. We did the report of the town administrator. Hold on, we got one other business. Other, uh, other business? Yeah, any other business? Um, we just have a note here that um, um, from Richard Lane, he'd like uh, us to please accept his resignation from recreation and CPC due to time constraints um, and want to thank him for his time to those projects. Thank you. Uh, just one announcement. I was privileged to, to attend the 80th birthday over the weekend of a former selectman. Should be the 90th birthday. It never let me, it never let me get away with it. Uh, uh, Jerry Dwight who was just a great friend and a great friend of the town and was a great selectman uh, when he served in this board. Uh, Jerry had one thing that always stuck in my mind and he, he said it often in that uh, we as selectmen can disagree here in this room and, 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 and argue and disagree on different things, but the most important thing was that we all walk out the front door together. And I, that's always stuck in my mind as one of Jerry's great parables that uh, made a lot of sense. So we, we in the board welcome, uh, we, we, we wish you all uh, the best wishes, Jerry, on your 90th birthday and, and continue watching. Thank you. One, I guess I, I have one other thing as well. Um, the Course Foundation every year gives out a community award, and um, there's a, a their gala comes up, and this is when they um, announce it. Uh, it's the seventh gala, and it's on October 27th at six o'clock. And this year's recipient of um, their award for the individual of the year is Jennifer Vitale, um, who does just a ton of work for the town and a ton of work for Course, and. Um, like I said, she will be honored at the uh, event, the gala, which is a black and white ball on October 27th from 6.30 to 11.30 p.m. at Citric Country Club. And I think you can get tickets online or find someone from course and you can get them there. Thank you. Uh, motion? Move to adjourn at 9.30. Second. Pen after signing of documents. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 The Can press was kind enough to wait. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 The meeting's over. Can I?